Do you want to introduce existentialism to your kids? See it now in 3D. This week, we ask, is Toy Story 3 a good movie? Welcome back to our podcast, where every week we're on a quest to curate the best movie collection. In a time when your favorite movies are constantly fluctuating through multiple streaming services, it is important to decide which movie has earned a spot in the collection. So join us every week as we ask a question, but is it a good movie? I'm your host, Ish, and with me as always is my co-host, Nick. That's me. And we back is Mia. Hi, it's Mia. And Nadia. Hello! All right, gang. So we watched Toy Story 3 for this week. I personally think probably going to be one of my favorite ones out of the whole, I don't know, and what are they, trilogy? Well, now it's uh, a series, I guess you would say. Yeah. A series? There's, there's four of them now. Yeah. But yeah. back when it was just a trilogy. A quad what, trilogy? What a, what a strong way to end it. Honestly. Yeah. I feel like I didn't remember this movie being as good as it actually was. Yeah, I think it might be even better. Watching it like whatever time this is for me, Mm -hmm. fourth or fifth time now. So, um, I wanted to talk about like a little bit of like the making of this movie because I feel like so far we've discussed with the other two Toy Story movies that making all the Toy Stories has been like a really rough journey. (laughs) So, when they were making Toy Story 3, Pixar didn't want to make it. Because, like, they were like, oh, we want to do it. But Disney wanted to do it as, like, a cash grab option, basically. Um, So Disney was like, well, we own the rights to the characters. Because during that contract that they made originally, even though Pixar made the movies, Disney was able to, like, actually hold the rights to all, like, the likenesses and were able to make movies if they wanted to. So they were like, yeah, you know what, Pixar, since you don't want to, like, make this for us, we'll make our own studio. I will make Toy Story 3 our own way. And I think I think they did that as like a. Like, as almost like a bluff as like, don't like we'll make you guys make this movie. Yeah, kind of like strong on them. But yeah, it's like it's like you won't have any like say over it. You gonna mm-hmm. like lose your chance to like end the series off in a nice way. And yeah, because we'll do it ourselves. Yeah, so like Disney made a new studio called Circle Seven Animation, and oh, the original story for Toy Story Three was gonna be a lot different. Oh wow! It, it was gonna be Buzz gets recalled, so he gets sent back to um like Taiwan or something, and while he's there, they find out that they might as well just get another replacement for Buzz instead of fixing him. So like Woody and the gang go on a, like a journey to rescue Buzz, oh. and like oh Buzz God. meets like a bunch of like foreign toys and stuff. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that actually sounds like actually like a really cool idea. Yeah, yeah. I wish that's what four was. Yeah, that would been <laughs> sick. Yeah, it it was kind of crazy because that story it would have been also a lot sooner than like in timeline wise. So Andy wouldn't have been as grown up either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So it's insane what could have been. And then Pixar was like, no, like, we'll do it because it's like there are babies, basically. Like, they made these characters. They made, every, like, the franchise what it is. So they're like, okay, fine. We give in. We'll make Toy Story 3. And when they finally started working on Toy Story 3, they didn't even bother looking in any of the notes of the, the original draft of it. They, like, trashed it on. We're like, we're starting over from scratch. We're like, that's not ours. Yeah, because they wanted to make it. <laughs> Okay. So that's like a little of like the history of Toy Story 3. Another thing that I don't know if you guys noticed in this movie was um, Slink has a different voice actor. Mm-hmm. You can tell. Yeah, because um, the original voice actor died in um, 2000. Mm-hmm. So he died like a couple months after Toy Story 2 came out. Oh, dang. Of lung cancer. But they got Blake, um, Blake Clark. He's like in a bunch of Adam Sandler movies to replace um that voice actor and ended up being that they were actually really good friends oh, okay that's so it's kind of cool i was gonna say uh i didn't notice a voice difference really no he did a really good job at yeah. like copying him 
but uh, going from two to three, you could tell that like at least it feels like the voice actors got like a bit older and stuff yeah. like that, a big like well like gruffer and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like everyone's aging. Yeah, it was kind of cool seeing um because we're watching them pretty consecutively. So watching Toy Story two and then watching Toy Story three, it's insane how much better everything looks and feels. Oh my god, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the animation is so much more fluid. Um, it looks like they did a lot more like care into this movie. Probably because they didn't have to like start over from scratch, like in Toy Story 2. Yeah, they were able to make their movie probably in one go, I'm assuming. I don't know. I know it's like um, I don't know how many rewrites they would have had had to do. If Disney was gonna be like, oh, we'll make it ourselves, like Pixar mm-hmm. probably couldn't have been like taking like too much time to redo things yeah probably had to nail it pretty good the first try yeah i know when this movie came out i i didn't do a lot of research on toy story 2 but i know this movie won two oscars it won like best animated feature film of the year and it got best achievement in music written for motion pictures Ooh, yeah so it's kind of insane but i wanted to ask you guys like so this movie is 12 years old now came out in 2010 do you remember seeing it for the first time? Yeah. And like your original thoughts on it? Mm-hmm. I feel like so watching it yesterday or yeah, watching it yesterday and then it really brought like all of the emotions I felt like I remember mm-hmm. feeling because I saw it in the theaters. I went with my mom to go see it. And I remember in that first like 30 minutes of just like either tearing up and crying or just feeling that like want to cry and i i had that like again and i just felt like the tears like right there the whole that first 30 minutes and it's not it's like it's such like a bittersweet movie and i think that's Mm -hmm. what makes it so special yeah i saw it in the theaters with my mom and it was one of the first times i ever saw like uh like a midnight release of a movie because I went like Thursday night Mm -hmm. and because uh, I was off the next day and so was she. So we were like, oh, let's do it. And I remember like on our way home or whatever, she was like fucking bawling her eyes out. (laughs) I was like, damn, I was like, calm down. It's okay." But after watching it, because like that was like, what, 2010? We were in high Mm -hmm. school. Mm -hmm. So like watching it now after college and shit, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. This movie hits harder. It's Mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I I remember I saw it in the theaters as well. And I do. I definitely got emotional, especially when they were like about to burn up in a trash fire. (laughs) (laughs) But um, I don't remember like being as enamored with it the first time I saw it as I did the second time, like watching it this time around. So I'm pretty impressed with it. Yeah. That's cool how we all saw it in the movie theaters. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, because we were all in high school at that time. So I feel like yeah. we were roughly around like Andy's age watching this. Right, right. And so we really did grow up with this franchise. Even though I didn't like love Toy Story 2, I still saw a ton as a kid so like watching toy story 3 like really hit home oh my for God, some yeah. reason yeah it's like a lot of like the um like the questions that that movie makes you ask yourself like as like now you're almost an adult and like watching this movie and watching these toys that you thought were going to be around forever and like usually when movies like in animated movies especially it's like always like oh yeah and they lived happily ever after but Toy Story 3 really makes you, like, see the reality of, like, ever after isn't an actual thing because things always come to an end. Yeah. You know, like, even in, like, your happily ever after, mm-hmm. you're still going to have to deal with, like, change. Yeah. You know, they all they all made it off the airplane and they all mm-hmm. made it back to Andy's house at the end and they all got to go get played with. And yeah. They all got Andy's name on their foot. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I said, like, that foot. But, um. <laughs> And then now it's like 10 years later, Andy's going to college and a majority of our cast of characters are gone. Yeah. They didn't make it, you know, yard sales and garbage day and shit like that. Yeah. So like only the favorites made it. So I feel like as I was watching it, I was also like, now I'm a year older. So now I'm like even relating even more to like Andy growing older. And at that time in high school, I was like getting rid of some of my older stuff. So it's kind of weird, um, just like that feeling 
Mm-hmm. Oh, like, I've never related to, like, an anime movie that hard before. I don't know if you guys have, like, similar experiences in high school. Well, what, two, 2010, it was my freshman year mm-hmm. of high school. It's probably the end of your freshman year. I was a sophomore, 2010. Yeah. So, I don't know. I definitely still did have some toys laying around, and it definitely, like, gave me some feelings about them. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't take them with me when I moved away, though, so I actually don't really know what's happened to my childhood toys. Gasp. Oh, my God. Did they make it to the attic? Are they in the trash? Or are they in a concentration camp somewhere at daycare? God, I hope not. (laughs) Yeah, now you start thinking about it. Like, oh, fuck. What have I done? (laughs) <laughs> um so let's get into the movie right so nick like quickly what's the movie about it's the shawshank redemption of the <laughs> toy story series so and he's going away to college mm-hmm. and we have our small cast of characters we got woody buzz jesse bullseye slink ham mr and mrs potato head and their children am i missing anybody I think that's it. So that's it. It's not like a big downsize from the other movies, but we don't have like the gang, you know, yeah. like like the Andy's Toys Entourage. We don't have like the Speak and Spell, Bo Peep. RC is gone. RC is gone. The shark. The shark. Mr. Shark. Mr. Shark's gone. Yeah. Yeah, it was kind of um, it was sad when the Woody was going over all the people that they yeah, because he was oh, like, and Wheezy too. Yeah, Wheezy. Wheezy. Yeah. And then someone else brings up Bo Peep, and he's like, yeah, like he's all sad and shit. Mm-hmm. Which, like, that sucks. Because, like, that was his yeah. girl. <laughs> I know. That's crazy that he's not, like, bitter towards Andy after that. I don't know what happened. Well, to, I mean, some, well, I know well, we see Bo Peep again, but. Because technically, Bo Peep was not Andy's toy. Oh, was that his she sister? Was, Molly. Yeah. yeah, it was Molly. It was uh, a lamp. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she was on there. So when Molly probably got older, they probably moved the lamp away or sold it or something. Did or like explain what happened to her in Toy Story 4? I th- Yeah. There's like her, a flashback. Yeah. It's her whole like, yeah, her whole story and everything. And I she think she like fell out of window. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I oh, guess damn. we'll have to uh, stay tuned next week for <laughs> yeah. what happened to Bo Peep. <laughs> you, you know what got me peeved? Well, when they were going over all the people that are gone, is that they were talking about how Wheezy's gone now. And I was like, all of Toy Story 2 could have been avoided. <laughs> Wheezy ended up just leaving anyways. Oh my God. It wasn't worth it. Oh it wasn't gosh. worth it. He was just trash. Wow. <laughs> so then, so we I know, have... it really like messes up that feel good <clears throat> ending of Toy Story 2 because he's the one that's like singing yeah. the outro. Yeah. And yeah. It's like, nope, he's gone. Which I wonder why they did that because he seemed like such a pivotal character in Toy Story 2 because he's the whole reason why the movie starts. Yeah, basically. And like just to get rid of him, not even like seeing him, but just like in passing dialogue, it's like, oh yeah, Wheezy's gone. And, and, that's, I, all, and that's all you get. Yeah. So I'm like, I wonder if like the creators of Pixar were kind of over Wheezy. Yeah, they're like, actually not my favorite. How long do you think Wheezy lasted from like Toy Story 2 to 3? How long? Like two days. Two days. I think the mom was like, oh, I thought I got rid of this. <laughs> anyway, right in the trash. <laughs> yeah. Either that or um, Buster. Just chew the Ooh, fuck out of it. I was going to say the dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I want to talk about is the opening of Toy Story 3. From like just like the title card with the uh, um branding that makes a three and then like the flames and everything. Did you guys pick up on that? The whole opening scene of that is almost a remake of the first shot of Toy Story One. Yeah. It's like now that they have better animation, they're they able to actually, actually animate everything. It's like what the kids see and shit. Mm-hmm. It, it was really good opening. Yeah. And when I was watching Toy Story 3, um, right before uh, recording, I was like picking up a lot of the things, or I was just like, "Oh yeah, Andy calls Mr. Potato Head one eye Bart in the original movie, and then when Mr. Potato goes like money, 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 that's the same thing he does in Toy Story one. It's like a lot of the things, even up to the point where um, Mr. Po- when Mr. Potato Head escapes in the Barbie car and Woody catches up to them, and he's like, 
oh, I brought my attack dog. That's also a force field. Mm -hmm. And and Woody's like, well, I brought my dinosaur that eats dogs with force fields. It's like, that's like exact Exact quote from Toy Story 1. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. And like when, and so I love when the runaway like the runaway trains happening mm-hmm. and they're like the orphans it's yeah. all the trolls yeah. hanging out and they're just like, <laughs> they have the same expression as if you were just holding one yeah. just staring at you <laughs> um yeah, yeah. So, and then and then we have uh buzz being op even in andy's stories yeah this fucking could just pick the entire train up what was the point of Jesse and Woody at that point. Yeah, right. <laughs> Buzz Lightyear could just do it all. Uh, Woody's roundup taught Woody nothing. No. Nope. No. I, I did like that whole feeling because it was like, I like this opening better than Toy Story 2's opening because Toy Story 2's opening was like fun and it was like, it's something new we've never seen before. It's like Buzz Lightyear's video game. But I feel like Toy Story 3's opening captures perfectly the essence of what Toy Story is supposed to be. Like this overactive kids imagination especially the part where like they are going back and forth about like the force field and then dinosaur is force field i feel like that's what kids do where it's like oh my character could swim underwater it's like well my character could fly lift up everything <laughs> underwater and it's just like it's just what kids do and even before you realize that this is andy's imagination and what he's pretending everything is it already feels like a kid's playtime right yeah no totally and i like how it is like the first movie, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. It's like a fun callback because like 95 to 2010, like yeah. such a long gap. And you're like, like, yeah, we grew up with this series. Mm-hmm. And then like to it's like there are probably like so many people, probably adults watching the movie. Going, oh, I remember yeah. this is what Andy said. Yeah, even like with the opening of the like, clouds in the sky. Yeah, they try to mimic it to look like Andy's like, um. Bedroom, bedroom wall. wall yeah did you notice there's stars there's on stars the now mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that was kind of cool i, I- noticed <laughs> <laughs> and so after we open we get andy's playtime. Mm-hmm. then we get so the first part that made me tear up is all the vhs oh, footage. The, montage. Oh, the montage oh my yeah. god the that real was- in the arms of an angel <laughs> <laughs> It was so sad. And they immediately bring in Randy Newman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> immediately. I love that rendition of it's like, so You good. Got a Friend in Me. Because I thought it was just like the same song, but no, he like re sang it a little bit because it's a little different. The cadence is a little bit like slower. Yeah, I like it a lot. The like the, the fun little montage of Andy growing up with mm-hmm. his toys. Mm-hmm. I love how the mom's like, Oh, does the blinking red light mean it's recording? Yeah. <laughs> Classic mom. <laughs> Gaslighting. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was also the first moment where I was just like, oh, my God, this movie's going to make me cry because I didn't like shed a tear, but I could feel like swelling emotions yeah. as that montage was happening. Because like, I don't know, like if you guys grew up rewatching all of your like kids VHS tapes of yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I didn't have too many. My parents no. didn't have a good camera, but no. but like going to take old photos and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. It was it was fun watching that. But what, like, I think was really off-putting is at the end of the montage where, like, the video fades to black at the same time where um, Rain and Human song is, like, our friendship will never die. And it's just like, oh, something's wrong. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Because it it felt so good and, like, the song was kind of slowing down to that point. And then those lyrics don't have any music behind them. It's just, like those words with like the video fading on black it made me like feel like something was wrong like the whole time <laughs> and then it cuts to the toys in the the toy chest right yeah mm-hmm. yeah where we find out who's left yeah and like the and, ploy. and they have operation playtime mm-hmm. where they steal andy's cell phone and they <laughs> yeah. call it this is so in sad. A sock. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Um, oh, where we actually find where we have three army men yeah. left. Yeah, that's insane. Sarge and the boys. Oh, another moment that made me like tear up as they're like, this is the end of the road for us. And they're getting ready to leave. And yeah. I'm just like, oh, like, that, no. That was definitely a moment where I felt like my first tear form is when Sarge turns to them and he salutes and he's like, it was an honor serving with you. Mm-hmm. I know. Weird, weird comparison, but when they jump out the window and they like fly away on uh-huh. their parachutes, all I thought about was the end of Charlotte's Web 
where all the babies fly mm-hmm. away. <laughs> oh. I was like, they're leaving us. So after that, we find out that Annie's going away to college mm-hmm. Friday. Yep. And his room is packed still. He has to like do all his like getting rid of shit. It's either to the attic, donate, or trash. Dude, the toys are always on a time crunch. I know. They're always like they got a weekend to yeah. like go across town and back. <laughs> I know what Toy Story 1 had like two days. And yeah. I think Toy Story 2 was also two days. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's insane how, like, all yeah. these movies so far, like, these yeah, they're toys. all they're all like weekend trips. Mm-hmm. And then I think this one is like maybe four days. They might have four or five days. They might have like a work week maybe. in front of them. And uh, so so Andy decides to put his toys in the attic. Mm. But first they're in a garbage bag, which kind of like they're like, fuck, we're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but so when he was putting all his stuff away and stuff like that i did like how he held buzz and woody in his hands yeah first time i watched it i thought they were both gonna go in the trash or he was gonna take buzz and woody and then like Mm. it was gonna be the whole moment of like woody's gonna be all like fucking like pissed that he's not going to college but i was but i was like oh wow he he picked his very first favorite toy to go to college with him. yeah i i like that i like that dynamic of toy story one where it Buzz was the favorite in that movie yeah. after he received them. And at the end of it, it made it seem like they were equal, like on equal terms. Mm-hmm. But it's cool how this movie just reinforces that's like, no, Woody's always been the favorite. Yeah. And that's mm-hmm. never going to change. Yeah, nothing to worry about, right? Even towards like the last possible moment of, the, of this movie, it's like reassure that Andy will never forget Woody. Yeah, Woody was always his favorite. What I thought was interesting about that scene where he has to pick and choose what goes in the attic and what goes in the trash is we see um we see molly right and molly has to also get rid of some toys to donate and it's interesting to see how molly's a lot younger than andy but for her she doesn't hold on to like toys as much as like andy does because andy even as a 17 year old still has a lot of his toys but molly's like over it she's like reading teen beat and like listening to music yeah i know she probably has like an iPhone and mm-hmm. she's like talking to boys and yeah, you know, she became Emily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting. Like, is that, do you think that's just because like of that, the comment saying that girls mature faster than boys do? Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, I could, I see, could that. see it. I could also see it all depends on like your interests growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause like I knew, I knew like guys who like, they barely played with toys growing up. They were all like outside and stuff like that. They were the athletic kids. Yeah. So instead of playing with toys, they played baseball and shit like that. Yeah, I want not our Andy. Yeah, not I was Andy. curious, like if it was like a because she is a girl, they mature faster. Or if it's like a generational thing, Ooh. since she is a lot younger, it's like it's like how people our age are always saying like, oh, we grew up playing with toys, and now kids today is now all they're playing is video games and like, phones. yeah, they couldn't care less about toys. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Like I. I played video games more after a certain point than with mm-hmm. toys, even though I was still in like the age bracket to play with toys. But so like I look at I have games that I'm like, these are like my childhood video games. Mm-hmm. And like I hold on to them just like you'd hold on to toys and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I had a couple, but like nothing like I never had like my own roundup gang. Agreed. You know? Same. Same. So like maybe it is kind of like a generational thing or stuff like that. Because like a lot of my stuff was hand me downs. Yeah. So I didn't have that connection to it where I was like, these are mine. Like, no, these were my brothers, actually. Okay. Know? So I don't know. But who knows? All I, I know, Barbie gets fucking shafted real quick yeah, in that movie. So. Poor Barbie. Poor Barbie. Honestly. The most adult toy in the yeah. movie, though. Yeah. I do like the few quips that Ham has. Or he's like, <laughs> I called James on Barbie's Corvette. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, like, I feel like he said something about the Corvette in the last movie. Yeah, because he was driving it. Yeah, he was driving it. And then I also like when, um, before that even happens and they're like deci- deciding that they're going to go up in the attic, he's like, all right, come on, let's go see how much we're worth on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to, since we're talking about kind of the 
in like uh beginning of the movie they they kept uh woody stitching from the last movie yeah, yeah. the red stitching andy did with like the weird little muscle like the on the red. one mm -hmm. yeah. yeah yeah it was like like two minutes in and i was staring at it and i was like yes they kept yeah. it they're consistent the consistency yeah i appreciate it that's cool there's, there's also a couple like scuffs and scrapes on all the toys yeah mm -hmm. yeah and i was like that's cool like like uh like the front of woody's hat like under the brim yeah it's like nicked and stuff yeah, like that they've been like used played and with. like played with exactly so like it's like the equivalent of like i don't know like getting older and like getting like wrinkles and stuff like that like they're yeah. getting their yeah they're Worn no, there was a lot more like weathered things in this movie. And even like when they were in the daycare and they were covered in paint and they got back to like Andy's house, they had to like hose off and they kept the paint on them from when they got messed up. Like yeah. they they paid held on to the little details. They did. Yeah, it was cool. I like the uh, when Buzz opened up his little like star command section oh, yeah. on his wristband oh, the and, phone number. and like the sticker is still is still gone and then like andy's phone yeah. number is right in there mm -hmm. i'm curious who wrote that did andy write that himself no definitely one of them like one of the toys wrote it they have good penmanship they really do <laughs> i feel like if one of them did it and andy <laughs> randomly picks up buzz it's like grow my phone number in buzz's arm i guess woody has a mom handwriting though yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know what i like um when Woody is reassuring everyone about the attic, and he's like, "Oh, come on, guys! The attic's not that bad." And there's like old board games, and there's like that old race car track up there. <laughs> and it was like all the Christmas decorations are yeah. fun to hang out with, and they're looking at him like he's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. and I like how Slink's like the old TV, and Woody's like the old TV. <laughs> <laughs> I know Slink is still like a hundred and ten percent Woody's right hand man. Yeah, even after all these years and all the shit he's been mm -hmm. through with them. So, because Andy puts them in the trash bag, Andy's mom thinks they're garbage. Yeah. So they get tossed the fuck right out. You know, it, this movie also starts right away, but I like how fluid this, like, beginning of this movie is compared to Toy Story 2. Whereas, like, in Toy Story 2, I feel like it's a very similar start to the movie where it's a rescue operation. Where Woody has to go and rescue Wheezy. But I feel like in this one, it feels a little bit more earned because like there's a reasoning behind like the mistake that they're all out on the curb. Right. Because Andy was trying to put all the toys in the attic, which is Andy is such an asshole because he didn't even listen to his mom. He's supposed to put the toys in the box after going to the attic and then the trash bag after going in the trash. He's a young man. He's a good teenager. I Who like listens all... to women? Come on. <laughs> exactly. Who listens to their mom? Yeah. Right. Especially you about to go to college. Yeah. yeah. He thinks he's hot shit right now. <laughs> but I, I do like that whole opening where it's just like now they're on their way to daycare. Yeah. Yeah. So like Woody's trying to get them to go back inside. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, you're still Andy's toys. He mm -hmm. wanted you in the attic. And they're yeah. like, fuck you, Woody. We're going to daycare, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like another thing that it's the same thing in like every movie. No one listens to Woody. No. They all think he's full of shit and Woody's always telling the truth. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like I don't know. He's still kind of a dick though. Oh, yeah, he is, but you know who is the real dick? Mr. Potato Head never believes them. He never. is, and he's always the first to point out yeah. he's like, I don't think we should go with them, guys. No, he, like... he turns on Woody so fast. And then he agrees with Woody so fast. Yeah. Like, like after like they go to daycare like later on and stuff. Mm -hmm. And like Jesse's like we should have believed you. And Mr. Potato's like, yeah, you're right. Jesse should have believed you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's like easy to hate on him from like any other toys perspective because everyone knows he's safe because he's mm -hmm. like the favorite. So it's easy for him to talk about stuff because he doesn't have to deal with the consequences of everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like it's like politicians. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So like Toy Story 1, right? That's a buddy cop movie, basically. Toy Story 2, it's like a heist taken versus like a taken scenario. Toy Story 3, it's a prison break movie. Yes. And um, so I want to talk to you guys about like if that idea works for you. Because when I was doing some research, apparently the crew who were in charge of Toy Story 3 watched a ton of prison break movies. <laughs> they were like, we think we've seen every prison break movie there is. And they took a trip to Alcatraz 
and like they were like scoping it out taking pictures and seeing how like the cells are and stuff because they wanted this to be like as realistic as they could possibly make it they wanted to still have like during the day the fun and like whimsy of a daycare but at night it gets like really dark and scary and i feel like they did like a good job at capturing that feeling Mm -hmm. i think they did what do you guys think about like the whole premise of the prison break for toy story 3 i mean i think the whole premise i think it worked out really well um i think the cast of toys that go along with this Mm -hmm. said prison break the guards so to speak pretty fucking scary yeah. i'm not gonna lie i i've only seen this movie once before but watching it again like i there was a lot i didn't remember yeah. did not remember big baby that is a terrifying toy <laughs> how could you forget big baby honestly i don't know but i just forgot big baby and then i forgot i mean about how cruel lots all was and just mm. everything the fact that they have the manuals of like the toys to go reset them mm-hmm. and they make them like just they put them under their control. Yeah. Yeah. Like Lotto, he like went in and he like made it that way. Yeah. So like in the daycare, it's two rooms, the caterpillar room and the butterfly room. Mm-hmm. Can uh, Like the little, little kids are in the caterpillar room. And they fucking ruin toys, man. Oh, yeah. They're just like throwing them everywhere. I'm not gonna lie though. <laughs> like I know it's like we we look at the toys as people, mm-hmm. but when they're being played with, it's kind of funny. <laughs> <laughs> with them just being fucking thrown everywhere. Uh, honestly, just like in Toy Story One and Two, I don't know if I said it, but Mr. Potato Head, when he kind of gets hit and his pieces go everywhere, oh, yeah. Yeah. it's such a comical thing. It's almost like um slapstick. Yeah, and in this one, it's kind of like it's like fucking scary because like the kids pick them up and fucking throw them, oh, and they just go everywhere. Yeah. And you're like, holy shit! Like parts are popping oh. off, and it's yeah, like, oh Rex my God. loses his tail and yeah. shit. It's like, it's like a Samsung phone in 2010. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, you dropped your Android. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, when they make it to daycare, they're greeted by Lotso Huggin' Bear. He smells like strawberries, mm-hmm. which is fucking weird. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out if he's based off of anything. There's probably a toy out there. I believe so. Yeah, my sister had something like it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to yeah. say like a Care Bear. Care, it is like a Care Bear, yeah. yeah. But I don't know. They're not usually scented, though. But it is funny that he was like in a junkyard and he still smelled like strawberries. Yeah. He did. <laughs> Yeah, so yes, we have lots of big baby, mm-hmm. and then kind of like the little entourage. But I don't yeah, know if they have names. Like octopus, was, yeah, oh, and like, Ken, you can't forget about. I was Ken. gonna bring him up. <laughs> so he's main character. So the the octopus is named Stretch. 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 You have like the bug guy. He's like the muscle moth. Yeah, moth, moth bug boy. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, and then yeah. you have Crunk. That's not what I would call him. Yeah. He's like a stone golem and he hits his head and the face is changed. Oh, and then he had fucking Bojangles. Oh, the, oh, the monkey. One. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And he had the monkey. And then you had all the trucks and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like the Tonka trucks. But yeah, we, and then we have Ken, mm-hmm. who is, <laughs> which the movie really wants to like fucking harp on. Ken is like gay, yeah. <laughs> but still madly in love with Barbie. So. Did you guys realize who Ken's voice actor is? No. No? No. It's Michael Keaton. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Rewatching this, I was just like, funny. he sounds really familiar. And I Googled it and I was like, it's Michael Keaton playing Ken. And I was like, he did a really good job as Ken. <laughs> That's cool. I'm kind of glad I didn't know that when I was watching the movie. Really? Yeah, I don't know. I would just imagine Michael Keaton <laughs> as Ken now. <laughs> It would really mess with me. I love that, that he is Ken. Just like Batman. Yeah, because Ken is like Lotso's second in command almost, right? Yeah, basically. Because I wouldn't say the baby is second in command. It's almost like muscle. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, That's bodyguard. Yeah, it's, it is the bodyguard, exactly. But Ken is like the guy who's like... <laughs> yeah, he's like... He has a little bit of the... He's the latest twitchy eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah, so uh, they put all the new toys in the caterpillar room. Yeah, and they're gonna put Barbie in there too. Mm-hmm. And Ken's like, "No, run away to the mm-hmm. to my dream house with me." And 
and then she kind of looks back at her friends and they're like go go yeah. go be with them i like how ken thinks it's ken's dream house it's yeah. not a barbie dream house <laughs> <laughs> like he's t- took yeah and it's full of clothes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. whoever donated that was like insane but yeah. yeah so much money for that shit i like when um ken and barbie when ken's trying to convince barbie to go to his dream house and not send a caterpillar room he's like it's like we were, and they both say, made for each other at the <laughs> <Yeah>. same time. <laughs> yeah, I say, Barbie is such a clutch character in this movie mm-hmm. for the gang. Talk about that later. But I love the dynamic of Ken versus all the other toys. You know who voiced Barbie? No. Jody Benson. She's the voice of Ariel. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. I, you know, now you say it, I could hear a little bit. Yeah, she voiced, I guess she voiced all the Barbies in Toy Story 2. And then now she is like the voice of Barbie in Toy Story that's 3. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, that, that's a, a little like fun fact that I didn't even know. I like yeah. how they keep their voice actors around. That's cool. I know. I'm glad they kept a lot of like the consistency. I was going to say it sounded like a good Barbie fit. So Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like when you first get introduced to Lotso, right? I feel like Lotso tries to sell um, Sunny. What is it? Sunny side? Yes. He tries to sell it as almost like a heaven. Yeah. yeah. Where he's like, it's like retirement. Yeah, but like a retirement to like an extreme, right? Because he's like, here, you'll live forever. And like, we'll take care of you and like, we'll fix you. And like, he just tries to sell us as like the ultimate goal. But when he ends, when we end up finding out that he's like deceiving them and using them as fodder. Yeah. Yeah. He's basically using them as like frontline troops. Yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy because. At first, it makes it seem like maybe it's like a mistake or something. Because even when Buzz gets captured later on and Lotso shows up, he shows concern for Buzz. He's like, what's going on here, guys? And like, it, you don't realize that he's a bad guy all, up until the point where Buzz denies him. And then yeah. that's where he's like, strap him in. We're going to like fuck this boy up. <laughs> Leave it to Toy Story 3 to le- uh, teach us about existentialism, corruption, and systematic abuse. <laughs> really? Because like Lotso, compared to Stinky Pete, I feel like they're very similar in their ideas. Whereas Stinky Pete was kind of jaded because no one wanted to play with him. Lotso is jaded in the way that he was played with, but he could not handle rejection not at all with being lost it's like his mm-hmm. whole like livelihood was just like ripped from him like yeah. he had no and he had no say in it you know yeah he was broken where it's just like lots of almost like implements like he has like mental health issues obviously because he's not like a bad guy but it's almost like he wants to hurt people the same way he is hurt mm-hmm. himself yeah like he wants everyone to feel what he felt yeah, which is so it's such a deep villain. It is. Like, it's a lot deeper than, like, what Stinky Pete was. Because Stinky Pete never went to that extent that Lotso does. Yeah, because he never, like, had, like, an owner. Mm-hmm. And, like, so, like, he was just, like, so used to the idea of, like, oh, well, yeah, we'll go to the museum. Yeah. Never be played with. So he was trying to, like, get the others to, like, yeah, like, coerce them into his idea. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, a, a Lotso is just going to make you feel pain. Yeah, gonna put you into like a situation that's gonna like fucking brutalize your toy parts. Yeah, I mean when- like at least Stinky Pete saw different like degrees of value in toys or like equals, but then Lots was just like everything's replaceable. You know, all you guys are just trash. He doesn't care. Yeah, it's like where Stinky Pete is. He doesn't care about kids. He wants to be preserved because he almost sees himself as like something to almost like worship i feel like he has a like some kind of like complexity issues but lotso is like the complete opposite but still as insane as stinky p lotso wants love he wants like all the affection but he's like he just wants it all to himself mm-hmm. yeah he's very uh self-centered yeah he'll never take turns in like the butterfly room because he's he's also trying to preserve himself but he's like I don't know. His his whole thing is like such a complicated like issue, right? 
I don't know if you guys see um, Lotso as complicated as I did. No, no, he definitely is. Right? As like as a character, especially for like a kids movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because like I feel like at surface level, kids will understand like this guy is bad. Like ooh, Lotso. But as an adult, like the more you think about Lotso and like what he's doing, it's like Lotso's really fucked up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and you don't want to like it's almost like you don't want to destroy him because he's like he just needs to be like understood and like taught a different way, but they never get that chance to. And so, so they make it into the daycare. Uh, Woody leaves. Mm-hmm. He bounces because like Woody actually ends up in the donation box, try to get his friends back home. So mm-hmm. he bounces. This is when we meet our new character, Bonnie, Bye. who's not a toy. <laughs> Bonnie's, a person. Bonnie's a little girl mm-hmm. uh, because while Woody's trying to leave the daycare he gets like hung up in a tree yeah and Bonnie finds him and takes him home and then we get to meet all of Bonnie's toys which I wish there was more of them in this movie I know there's more than four mm-hmm. but I thought there was way more of these toys maybe there are more but they're like in her chest no no like, like, like more scenes with these guys oh okay like like I thought we spend more time at Bonnie's house mm-hmm. that's how I remember the movie but it's pretty it's pretty quick it is quick mm-hmm. yeah we meet oh I don't even remember the porcupine's name but he's like an actor Mr. Prickle Pants I think yeah He's like an actor. He takes all his scenes yeah. like very seriously, like as if he's mm-hmm. in like a role, which was really funny because like when we first meet them, there Bonnie puts them all at a tea table mm-hmm. and they're having tea and stuff like that. And then when she leaves the room, he's like, "Where are we?" And he like shushes him. He goes, "Stay in character." And he like goes right back to just being a toy right in front of him. Yeah, Mr. Prickle Pants is um Timothy Dalton. Oh, so it's like that's James, cool. He's James Bond, but he's like the most British he's ever been. That's sick. <laughs> And we have Buttercup, Buttercup, which is a male unicorn. And he's like, hi. He sounds like he smokes weed. He sounds like a little bit like a Seth Rogen. He is Seth Rogen. That is Seth Rogen? Yeah, it is Seth Rogen. It's not? No, it's Jeff Garland. Oh. Oh, it is Jeff Garland. Yeah, he's um, the manager in Curvy Enthusiasm. Yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. (laughs) Um, And then we have Trixie, the uh, Triceratops. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, she's probably the like the, the like probably my favorite one at Bonnie's toys. <laughs> yeah, she's oh. uh, she's played by Kristen Schell. Ooh, she's um Louise in Bob's Burgers. Yeah. Well, and this time around, I didn't notice it the first time I saw it, but there's a Totoro plush. Yeah. yeah. And he was in a lot of scenes. He doesn't talk or anything, but I'm like, that was cool. I never noticed that. I'm like, did, did Disney interject that or d- was that always there? I think it's because Disney has the rights to distribute Studio Ghibli in yeah. like the United States. It's or at like least a... they did. Isn't it like for kids now or something? Well, at the time. Yeah, at the time yeah. they had it. The distributing it rights. Was cute though, yeah. Like it, it didn't even need to talk. It was just no. so funny to mm. be there. I I never noticed it either. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think he like smiles a lot. Yeah, smile like that. a lot. And, hobble over. And then we have Dolly. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then the little peas. The peas. Pod. He's in the pod, and then is that it for her toys? I think so. I remember the peas being like there in the movie more. I don't know why. I know they're just a side character. They're so funny. Their voices always got to me because they're just little kids, little voices. They all talk <laughs> like this, and they're so cute. You're missing one character. Clock. Do you remember? Ooh, oh. Chuckles. Oh, Chuckles. Yeah. Ah. Chuckles a clown. Yep, Chuckles. Yeah, which we <laughs> understand that he's he's more vital to the story than we know. Yeah, it's in... Um, it's when he's trying to leave Bonnie's house and he yeah. learns about um, like what Sunnyside is. Yeah, which is kind of a cool way to introduce that because Woody only leaves because he wants to get to Andy. He doesn't leave because he thinks Sunnyside's a bad place. He thinks it's a good place right he like he's yeah, like yeah this place is great but we have an owner we have mm-hmm. andy yeah we have yidna yeah yidna who's yidna <laughs> who's yidna <laughs> so it is cool when he's leaving and i think it's buttercup or someone asked like how did you escape it was yeah. like mm-hmm. what do you what do you mean escape and then that's where we get the whole backstory of who watson really is yeah so um yeah because what giggles was like 
abandoned. Chuckles. Oh, sorry. Chuckles. <laughs> was with Lotso. Yeah, he was part of the Lotso gang with Big Baby. Yeah. Lotso. Big Baby, Lotso, and Chuckles. And they all belong to Daisy. Daisy. Yes. And Daisy took them on a picnic one day and she fell asleep and her parents forgot to put her toys in the yeah. car. And so they all got left behind mm -hmm. on accident. Terrible on parents. Purpose. No, that's the sad part because um, Chuckles is the one that's saying how Lotso didn't give up. So in that time, Lotso was like Woody. He's like, we have an owner. We have to get back to them. And it almost made it seem like Chuckles and Big Baby were like, okay, we're abandoned. Like, let's move on. But he's lots of like, no, we have to get back. And they journey all the way back to them. So I don't even know how long that journey takes because it seems like a lot of time has passed, at least enough time where when they finally arrive back at the house, Daisy has a new lots of bear. Yeah. And it's funny because I know like Toy Story 2, they brought up the idea of like having multiples like on the toy when you go mm -hmm. into the toy barn. But like. I don't know, like that idea never crossed my mind that she would get like a replacement or anything. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, whoa, I'm like, I forgot. I mean, duh, yeah, toys exist in quantity. Yeah, which is like a more heartbreaking part of the story because Lotso sees it as a betrayal almost. Like we stabbed. were abandoned. Yeah, he got stabbed in the back and he was replaced because he's so replaceable. But it's not that. It's that Daisy loved Lotso so much that her parents replaced him with another Lotso bear because of how much love and affection he, she had towards this bear. Yeah. But he could not see that. Yeah. He only saw it as betrayal. Yeah. Oh, and I could only imagine. I mean, Woody, at least Woody is like a vintage, unique, like obviously from Toy Story 2, a valuable doll even. Yeah. Or yeah there's figure. no way Andy's mom's going to be able to drop like six grand on yeah. a new Woody doll. <laughs> but... I imagine if Woody was in the same position where Andy replaced him with another Woody doll, he might break. He might be yeah. a lot so. Yeah. Well, luckily, he's always been able to be back in time. Yes. So that that's like another important like difference between Lotso and like Woody because they're very similar in like mm -hmm. what they believe in and everything. And like when he snaps, I do like the little mention of he immediate, immediately is like, fearful of being alone so he convinces like chuckles and he convinces big baby that's like no we were all replaced and like chuckles <laughs> is like no you, you when, were replaced yeah, only you were replaced because he saw and he and lots of refuses to let big baby see yeah mm -hmm. which is like it's so crazy how yeah because quickly everything happens his big baby is uh, manipulated to go with him mm -hmm. but like chuckles just kind of has to now follow yeah you know yeah, because Lotso almost forces them to leave. Yeah. He rips, like, Big Baby's, like, Daisy pendant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I like how Chuckles kept that. He kept yeah. it, like, yeah. all these years. And when he we finally see, um, because they leave on the Pizza Planet truck. Yeah. 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 And when they, uh, they all get <laughs> bumped off, I think that's where, like, Lotso develops his, like, limp. Like when they fall off the truck, he's like limping towards Sunnyside. Oh, and he's got the cane now. And yeah, and he like there's like lightning in it. Like it makes Sunnyside seem as this ominous place. So it's kind of interesting imagining what happened right after, where lots of shows up to Sunnyside and immediately manipulates everyone. Right? Oh my god! Yeah, it probably took a little while because not yeah. sure how many toys were there already. Probably like manipulated this lottery system. Yeah, because into who stays in what room and stuff, and then he like got his crew together and shit. Yeah, because Chuckles makes it seem like it happened so fast, and like he was like a tyrant. <laughs> yeah, which is so sad because he was like such a lovable character, and like one little thing can like change him. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, mm -hmm. Chuckles is a Joker of the Toy Story universe. <laughs> Just one bad day. <laughs> Just one bad day closer. So they're in the daycare. They get played with. They fucking hate it. Mm -hmm. Buzz gets captured and put on demo mode. Which yeah. puts him back into his Space Ranger bullshit. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like is always a small plot line in every of the movie. I'm not yeah. sure about four. I need to rewatch that. But like the first one, he thinks he's a real Space Ranger. <laughs> 
Yeah. And then in two, we get the second Buzz Lightyear who thinks he's a real space ranger. And then this one, he gets reset back to being a space ranger. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if that's just because, like, Buzz is kind of more of a one-sided character than Woody is. So they, like, don't know how to work with him. Because they keep making him go back and reverting to this thing. Like, in Toy Story 2, he gets replaced with that yeah. other Buzz. So I feel like they like that, like, oblivious Buzz. Yeah, I like that dynamic of all the toys understand their toys, and then there's one that's just like, I'm a space ranger, god yeah. damn it. Like, that is really funny. I guess think about all of, like, I mean, his, I think that's Andy's, well, at that moment, like, the only one that needs, like, a battery pack to even get him to work, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, yeah. So I think it's, like, yeah, they, like, really played off of that idea of being able to kind of revert him back because he had the functionality to physically do it. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. No, that is funny. You know what I think is funny actually is that at the daycare, in order to reset him, they had to find a manual, which tells me that there was another buzz in the past. Yeah. It would be kind of interesting if he was still there and they like ran into each other. <laughs> Clone buzz. Oh my god, that'd be cool. Like like a broken buzz. Yeah. Maybe he doesn't have an arm or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think the more dark thing is that there isn't another buzz. Now, yeah. Probably got thrown away. He probably got thrown away because he couldn't survive the caterpillar. Maybe room. that's why Lotso was so quick to like bring him on to his like little entourage group. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it almost seems like he knew what Buzz is capable of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's already been through a buzz. <laughs> yeah, right. I do like how um it since it is like a daycare, it would make sense that the adults keep all the manuals. Yeah. Like, so they could be able to like restore the toys and like fix them whenever something happens. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, but right before Buzz gets captured, we see it's kind of like poker night for the toys. <laughs> oh, they, yeah. they go into the top of the vending machine and they're all betting um, on uh, fucking what that what was what, what that thing called? You pull it and it spins on the animal like the, and it yeah. makes yeah. the animal noise. Like, I duck. never had one growing up, but my cousin did. It's like the duck goes quack. Yeah. yeah the cow goes moo. Yeah. I don't know what those are called. I always called them like spin wheels. Or, like, but like they're betting on what animal's gonna go on. And so, dude, money. that was so funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that a lot. You know what? That's one of, one of the I do think this movie is like really good, but one of the only parts of the movie where I have a hard time grasping is that part. Because it's implied that the monkey, right? He sees awe and he's able to alert everything. Like, why doesn't he alert everyone that Buzz leaves? Because he doesn't do it quietly either. Take a bathroom break? <laughs> he took a bathroom break? <laughs> I don't know. That, that's like my only gripe is that the monkey's supposed to be like this thing that's like unstoppable and he'll see you no matter what. But he doesn't alert everyone that Buzz escapes. Yeah. Kind of an error. Yeah. It is, it is, it seems like they thought of the monkey after that. Maybe, like, because, like, he's right behind them. Maybe, like, the monkey doesn't know that, like, he's just trying to escape since he's going to the same place that Ken is going. No, because he, he has to escape through the, 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 like, oh, yeah, you're yeah. right. But that's, like, the only part where I'm just, like, usually in all the other Toy Story movies, there's a couple of scenes where I'm, like, this doesn't make sense. That's the only part in Toy Story 3 where I'm, like, I have a hard time believing in that. Considering that the monkey is like the hardest thing to beat in this movie. Sorry, I know we moved on from this, but, but according to Fisher Price, the little spinny wheel is called a CNC. Farmer says. Ooh, a CNC. CNC. Yeah. Mm. Well, you know, going back a little bit, since I'm talking about the monkey, did you notice that like the monkey is the first toy we meet in to- and um, the side side? Side? yeah. Bonnie's Bonnie's playing playing with them. So it's cool how like the monkey stays up front the whole time. Yeah, by like the cameras and stuff. It makes sense. He never goes into like the toy room. He's always like there at the front (laughs) counter. Yeah. Which is kind of cool. I just I noticed that this time we're watching it. I was like, oh that I I didn't pick that up last time. Yeah, so so Woody's told that his friends are in danger. And so he goes back to Sunnyside. Mm -hmm. Which suicide. Let's just be let's just face it. Suicide mission. Sunnyside? Yeah. Like, I don't know. That'd be fucking scary. That's like, that's literally like prison break concept. Like, you're going to go back into prison to bust 
prisoners out. Yeah, that's like, right. So so he makes it back, and there was a character that we didn't talk about that comes back for to like tell Woody like what's up. It's the little phone on oh, wheels. Yeah. The when they bus. first get there, he like bumps Woody <laughs> in the leg, and he's like, "Oh hey there, little guy," and then he doesn't even like pay attention yeah. to him. This time, he like listens to him, and he's just like. I don't know how you got here or like y'all know why you're back, but they cracked down on security real hard. <laughs> he's like all like gruff and shit goes, they won't break me. I like how he's got those shifty eyes. Yeah. Back yeah. And, forth. and it's just like, he's like, if you want out, you gotta get rid of that monkey. Yeah. And he's like, he's like the monkey's eye in the sky. And he like goes through like all the heist. <laughs> He's just like, and outside they have like the rolling patrol trucks and searchlights. And no matter what you do, you're fucked. <laughs> yeah. I do like that where um he kind of looks at the window. He's like, they haven't broken me yet. <laughs> I've been here for years. Foreshadowing. <laughs> oh, I know. But I, yeah, I think the phone is probably my favorite side character. Yeah. Yeah. Just of how gruff he is. And you don't expect him to be that gruff. Mm -hmm. But just shows like how tough Sunny Side is. <laughs> <laughs> that this little Fisher Price, Price toy. And I like how Woody calls him old timer. Yeah. Because it's an old toy. <laughs> that whole section is one of my favorite moments of Toy Story 3. The um the heist or like the prison break sequence where he's like showing you everything that has to happen. Yeah, he's just like. He's like, what the walls? He goes like a cinder block, eight feet high. Yeah. Only way, no way through. Only up oh, and oh. under. <laughs> and, and it's like, oh my god, I love it because then they're like, um, like a window is always locked, and it was oh, like, yeah. it was like the montage of all the doors locking oh, and shit like that. And, and he's like, the key is located in the office, and it's yeah. like, so like the monkey not only serves a purpose of like the alarm, but he also serves a purpose of guarding the keys. Yeah. I think this movie really reinforced how much I love fucking heists, like bank robberies and mm -hmm. shit like that. And like the plan, making the plan is the best part of oh, any yeah. of them. Like, I didn't even care about like actually watching like the bank robbery, just them mm -hmm. planning everything and like doing like surveillance mm -hmm. and like recon and shit. I'm like, that's the coolest part. I, I love how I was like, I want a job where I could just recon a bank. Yeah. Like I love how they, <laughs> they make the plan and they execute it like super well, right? Yeah. Like nothing goes wrong all the way up to like the end. Yeah, I think there's only like two snags basically they kind of hit, which we'll talk about because it's the best part of the movie. So yeah, like the whole breakout plan, right? They um use Mr. Potato Head as a decoy because earlier. He this goes is, to the box because yeah. <laughs> he has a big mouth on him. It's the box is like, um, oh my god, what is it called in prison when you're locked away? Like isolation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And uh, yeah, so he's like thrown in the hole essentially. And he's like, all that's in there is sand and a couple of Lincoln locks. And like, I don't think they're Lincoln logs, buddy. Solitary confinement. That's it. Yeah. That's it. That's Fucking solitary confinement. Dude, that line where Ham's like, I don't think those were Lincoln Logs. One of the reasons <laughs> I never played in sandboxes as a kid. Because I'm like, they're just big litter boxes for any animal that walks by. Or, or a child. child. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that you both said that at the same time. <laughs> like as if you've witnessed a child taking a shit. <laughs> or you both committed. <laughs> <laughs> I I found a a used diaper in a ball pit once as a kid, and ever since I've never been in a ball pit. <laughs> Do it. I my feel mom, like a sandbox might be same concept. Yeah. yeah, I say my mom never let me in one of those like ball pits as a kid because of how gross they were. I did not realize how gross they were until until, until that, that fateful day. Yep. <laughs> that be would do it. Before we continue with the heist, I want to talk about how the toys realize that they've made a mistake because um when they're trying to figure out where buzz is before buzz gets like lobotomized basically <laughs> <laughs> mrs potato head is looking for him and she yeah. can see andy with her other eye because her other eye the whole time is missing yeah it's lost <laughs> which i find super clever because she could see into andy's room that way yeah. that's like a really smart plot um device i think to see what's going on at Andy's place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she interprets everything because she can't hear, obviously, because it's only the eye. So she just interprets everything by, like, 
his actions and stuff. And they realize that, oh, man, Andy's really upset. Oh, no, Woody was right. We weren't trash. We were supposed to be in the <laughs> attic. So I like how <laughs> Ham's like, ah, I see you turned on him. And, it's like, and Mr. Potato is like, well, you turned on him first. <laughs> yeah, I know. I wonder what the range on uh, Mr. Potato Head's like body parts are like because like because Sunnyside's not too far from the house it seems like maybe a couple blocks mm-hmm. or so and so you can still see your eyes so I'm like I'm wondering like could you drop off like one of their eyes or ears in like another state and fly them over they'd be able to see in here I don't know but I want to like, know I want to know the bluetooth <laughs> it makes the radius. You, yeah, the radius. <laughs> it's a bluetooth <laughs> It makes you also think, right? It's like, does that mean any of their extra body parts are always functional, even though they're not attached to the potatoes? Because it seems like it's only Mr. and Mrs. Potato that could do that. Because when Buzz's mm-hmm. arm comes off in the first movie, it's yeah. dead weight. Yeah. Yeah. At that point. Same with Woody's. Oh, Woody's arm. Woody's arm had like an inconsistency problem. Yeah. Like, it well, didn't right, work right. one second, then didn't. But yeah, you're right. It was because the potato heads are like modular. <laughs> <laughs> they can go anywhere that is a funny scene when um they're after they got destroyed in the caterpillar yeah. room how they're throwing their pieces back and forth between each other yeah it's like yeah my nose <laughs> oh and all the things the kids shove up their like oh, yeah. fucking yeah. ass like, the marbles and crayons and yeah. stuff like that you know out of all of that torture i think the one i felt the worst for was ham because he gets shoved oh, with a bunch of, like, glitter and, like, yeah. glue yeah. inside of him. And I was like, no. Oh, yeah, they make macaroni art on his back. So violated. Yeah. Still, Honestly. still one of the best ones is uh, is when the kid's spinning Jesse around and it kind of hits her off the wall. Yeah. This is the thud. <laughs> <laughs> or when they dunk Jesse's head in the paint. Oh, my God. Yeah, in their hair. Dude, ugh. I cringe so hard. I'm like, I, if this wasn't like a movie, I feel like that would never come out. Uh huh. Yeah. You know what I like? A little like thing that they did is when Buzz is realizing what's going on and he's like looking around, all the toys are hiding, and then the kids burst in and I, like knock Rex out of the way. Oh, and, and the his head, goes yeah, up. it goes over his head. <laughs> He's in battle mode now. And then like, that, ah, and the kid just like fucking licks Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> and when Buzz gets shoved up to the window and he sees the cat the butterfly room and everyone's just like playing like super nice. Cradling their baby <laughs> toys. Lotso's just, like, just getting a pickle on? hug. <laughs> oh man. I thought L- Lotso was gonna like smirk at him or something, but Buzz is just like so confused. I was like we were fucked (laughs) he's like there must be a mistake here yeah thinking about the kids in the butterfly room Mm -hmm. versus the caterpillar room like the age difference probably like what like three four years maybe somewhere in between but but what what kid is gonna play with big baby i'm sorry but that eye that fucking crooked eye it has is terrifying i feel like anyone who had a baby doll like that all their eyes always did that. They did always do that. <laughs> That's yeah. terrifying. They, As a kid who never did. had... They, yeah, there was always the one. It was always the one eye would always be like half. Yeah, mm. there's always a lazy-eyed baby. There is. Like, yeah. <laughs> Their equilibrium is off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I guess I you look know, at though. it like you're like a mother. You're like, I love you for who you are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I... I didn't love baby dolls. Like, I didn't really like playing house that much, but I had a friend, not you, Nadia, but another friend yeah. that loved playing house. And I was always the dad, which would I was okay with. But I preferred to play with, like, Barbies and, like, I had a lot of toy cars. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, I was big. It was yeah, very, Barbies like, mixed and... gender of toys. Yes, agreed. Um, I Same. feel like when we first saw Big Baby, um, he or she, I don't know the gender Dang. of they <laughs> they awesome. were in the bathroom, so I like to think Big Baby just chills out in the bathroom. Smoking a cigarette in the girls' room. <laughs> Big Baby's, yeah, yeah, monitoring both sides there. Yeah. I like how Big Baby has, like, drawings on them, so it looks like he has tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it does. It's, it's like a heart on, like, the, the back yeah. of that Yeah, eye. and, like, scribbles from, like, crayons and markers and stuff. It does. It, it makes them look. Or the or fact that, them- like... Big babies like naked. I don't know why. I feel like baby dolls like that with the like plush bodies always end up naked for some. Yeah, they've been through a lot, right? (laughs) I don't know where their clothes go. Because like when we have the flashback, big baby has the bonnet and stuff, and then when we see them now, it's like 
like gone. It is whenever they get donated, they always don't have the clothes. <laughs> Where do they go? I don't know. <laughs> Why would you keep them? They don't fit on babies. <laughs> How old do we think Bonnie is? Hmm. Like four? Yeah, four I, or five. I, I was gonna say sure. five, six. Yeah, because she's, she's like daycare. not old enough yeah. to be in kindergarten unless uh, it's during the summer. No, because Andy's graduating. Actually, it might be the summer. Because we, mm. we see when they're in the room, Andy lifts up his graduation photo to when he was a kid with all the toys. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say it's summer. It's got to be so, like June. So if yeah. Bonnie is able to go to, because I think it's probably the year before she could go to school. Because mm -hmm. I think that's how four starts. She, she starts school. Yeah, Her, Sunnyside's like almost like a pre-K kind of deal. Yeah, so four or five. Maybe like she just turned five if she is five. Mm -hmm. All right, I could agree with that. Five. Okay, I was thinking like four. Yeah, I could see in five, between though. that. Like, yeah. pre I mean, we were in preschool four years old, and yeah. then to five, so we were in that. Like, I started preschool at three. Yeah, you started a little younger in life. Yeah. Than um, <laughs> a lot of us did. I think it's the way your birthday happens because you're because you're a summer birthday. Yeah, yeah. you're a June baby. And I'm a December baby. Yeah. But I was wondering if Bonnie's supposed to be the same age as Andy. I don't think so. No, I think no, she's, younger. she's younger. No, Andy's sure. 17. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for clearing that up for me. Yeah, no problem. I know they play with toys at the end together, yeah. but they're not the same age. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> so creepy. <laughs> when we get to that part, I really have a hot take. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Oh, my. Right, so... Let's talk about the heist because I really enjoy the heist. So, so phase one, get the key. Yeah, well, and and knock the monkey out. That's phase one. So oh, wait, oh, oh, wait. With Mr. Potato Head. Yeah. Wait, phase one is distraction with Mr. Potato Head uh -huh. and capture Buzz. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, I like the way they like kind of do it. Mm -hmm. Where like so like they use him as bait. He goes to solitary confinement. And then Ham and Rex pretend to fight. Yeah. And then they like drop the storage container on them and stuff like that. And I love how Buzz tries to escape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where he like, he like uses his laser to make a circle and he hits off of it. So he thought yeah. he was going to bust right through. There, I think it's so clever going back to like before they start getting out of their jail cells. Mm -hmm. I love the jail cells, how they're like toy baskets. containers. Yeah, they're like the toy baskets. And I thought that was very funny. <laughs> Ham's playing the harmonica in it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Woody uses Slink to kind of like uh, make it through this part, which I thought was cool because they've always been like, you know, best buds. Now they're doing one last heist together. No, and the way they take care of that monkey is pretty brutal. I mean, the monkey is terrifying. The like, monkey is yeah. terrifying. I don't know who's more terrifying, the monkey or Big, Big Baby. Baby. <laughs> But the monkey. the monkey is up yeah. there, and they just like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when they first uh, see the monkey, they're gonna try to like throw a sack over his head, and then they hopefully get him there. Mm -hmm. and, but the monkey like sees him, and when it like flips around, and goes like, ah! yeah, and that fucking like freaks out on them and shit. He, like yeah. bashes Woody's head with the symbols, which kind of worked as a sound muffle, but yeah. <laughs> it's also really scary. But then they like tape him up a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's when and they finally do capture when him. The, what the key rolls away oh no it's the um the the, speaker. Speak, yeah the intercom guy falls away and they both kind of look at each other and the monkey hisses at him like yeah. that was so fucking scary dude. His, his eyes freaked me out yeah it, it reminds me of um who framed roger rabbit with the uh, the bad guy because his eyes are they super red out. and they pop out yeah a lot. yeah the popping out eyes i don't know who thought that was like cute for a kid's toy it is no. just terrifying. No, it's very it's scary. Bo yeah, Bojangles there is a terrifying concept of a toy. I'm happy kids found enjoyment in them, but they're <laughs> horrifying. Horrifying. So, like, when that happens and they tie them up, Slink uses, like, the cameras to, like, notify everyone else to, like, 
start the next phase. Yeah, yeah, that was clever. And they also just dropped Bojangles in a drawer. <laughs> so yeah. whoever opens the drawer next is just going to find this taped up hostage monkey. <laughs> oh, I know, right? Yeah. Imagine the staff the next morning. Like, be so what crazy. happened in here? <laughs> so confused. Maybe, well, Bonnie was playing with it. Maybe they're just like, oh, those darn kids. <laughs> yeah. Bonnie gets banned from daycare. Just, <laughs> just get Andy's mom in there. She'll gaslight them. Oh, yeah. that'll yeah. work. Perfect. Truly. So, um... This is when Mrs. Potato Head slides her husband a new body. <laughs> yeah, <I bet. laughs> a slimmer one. Oh, Jesse, no, no. Jesse slides the tortilla. Oh, oh, is it Jesse? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Jesse this slides bit. him over. Tortilla. And and we just see his like animated like like body parts coming out, just take it away. <laughs> like a zombie. <laughs> yeah. And so we get Mr. Tortilla Head, which is the best part of the movie. Yeah. Hands down. That's like the one part of the movie where I was like. It's straight up body horror at that point. <laughs> He's all flimsy walking yeah. around and shit. I, I expect like lightning to be flashing behind him when like all his pieces are like crawling towards yeah, the tortilla. Yeah, yeah. He's like, like Frankenstein like, together. And yeah, he folds the tortilla and pins it in. Yeah. I do like how they keep it light though. When he like stands up, it's just like very light music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. those like pieces just barely go in the tortilla without falling out. Yeah, right, right. You get like the puncture holes, but that's about it. He is very cute. I like how he has a mustache, even though he doesn't need to. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, gotta, like, gotta look your best. So yeah, and I like when um after he like waddles over and he signals because he, he's basically lookout, right? That's like yeah. his whole job. Mm-hmm. And he signals over, and then it cuts to a pigeon just, like, chilling right <laughs> next to him. And it's, like, not even, like, a full-on attack. It's just, like, two, three pecks. And then Mr. Potato Head just, like, falls apart. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, get out of here, feathers. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was the best part. He, like, sees a cucumber silhouette in, in that, the distance. Yeah, the garden. Mm-hmm. And so. then they, they're able to convert Buzz, right? Or kind of convert him. Well, yeah, so they hold him down and they're like, oh, we need something like tiny to poke at the hole. Mm-hmm. So they get Rex to hold it in. And he goes, okay, Jesse, what next? He goes, uh, don't hold it for more than 10 seconds. And then like Buzz like dies. Yeah. And then comes back to life <laughs> and he's in Spanish mode. He is in Spanish mode. <laughs> Which is so funny. I, I love how it's like, um. so I, I've seen this movie dubbed in Spanish before. So, like, what does it become? So, okay, so it kind of sounds similar, right? Because when Buzz turns into Spanish mode, he becomes Spanish. So he speaks, like, traditional Spanish, Spanish. From the motherland yeah. of España. Yeah. <laughs> so he, like, has a lift and stuff whenever he speaks it. And when you're watching it, like, in Latin American Spanish, he also gets, like, a Spaniard accent. And then when you watch it in European Spanish, it just becomes an even more exaggerated version of that accent. <laughs> just archaic yeah. Spanish. It's like Southern Spain. <laughs> oh my God. That's yeah. so that's cool. awesome. Because uh, like, I was actually going to bring that up. I was like, I wonder what it's like in other. Um, yeah. Because um, it was what? It was like that show Bluey. Where yeah. like the one kid is like, uh, speaks a completely different language. Uh-huh. But when you watch it in that, uh, that country's language. It's role reverse, yeah. where it's they speak English when like Bluey spoke English. Yeah. I know that's like a child show, but it popped up on my TikTok and I got very interested. Yeah, Buzz just speaks like a very like ups- he's like almost like a matador. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, I I do like that because it's like Buzz becomes very feisty. In Spanish yeah, mode. and I'm very very spicy, mm-hmm. very spicy, very yeah. jalapeno. I like when he turns <laughs> when so he rando. first turns into like demo <laughs> mode, right? He's already showing attraction to Jesse. Yeah. Because I feel like regular Buzz, maybe he has never confessed that he likes Jesse. Mm-hmm. But when it converts into demo mode, he's like, You're like, what does he say? Like, your charm is not going to work on me. Or like, Oh, yeah. yeah. Temptress. Yeah, Temptress. Temptress. That's what it is. And then when he turns Spanish mode, he's like obsessed with Jesse. Yeah. yeah. Can't hold his feelings he back. Thinks she is more beautiful than the night sky. Yeah. The yeah. stars. <laughs> He tries to the up- desert rose. Yeah. <laughs> he tries to like updo Woody every time Woody <laughs> yeah. does anything. Yeah, he thinks Woody's also in yeah. competition for it. So he's like, no. I yeah. know I'm getting ahead of myself, but Buzz is the only one to try to save Jess Jesse when they're in like the trash when they're like 
dumped in the trash dumpster. Yeah. This is true. Does he? Yeah, he was the only one that went after. Oh, wow. I would have thought Woody would do something. That's yeah. something that really stood out to me. I'm like, no one is trying to help Jesse. Just pause. And she's getting crushed. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. She mm -hmm. would have got crushed by the TV. Mm -hmm. yep. But like all that ends with we find out that they finally broke the telephone. And he like told on them. Yeah. yeah. Which is really sad. I, I hate looking at him because like they smudged his smile away. Yeah. And he's like beat up. He's like, sorry, I finally broke. Sorry, <laughs> cowboy. But uh right before that, so like we have because uh when they run past, so like Mr. Cat head is Mr. Cucumber head, and mm -hmm. they get his body back. <laughs> finally. <laughs> um First time I ever saw that, I thought he was a piece of shit. You thought it was a Lincoln Log? I thought it was a Lincoln Log. <laughs> no, he's I a cucumber. Yeah, no, but yeah. the first time I saw the movie, I had a moment where I was like, wait a minute. Did they really just do this? And I was uh, like, oh, wait. Oh, because he went, oh, I feel healthy. No, I, I hate so it. fresh. Yeah. Fresh. <laughs> so the whole gang escapes into the... Um, the trash. The yeah. trash. Yeah, and then that's where... They we, get uh, cornered. Yeah. And Lotso shows up and he like, wait, what? we forgot about the big scene with Barbie and Ken. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Part of the heist. That's important. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Barbie is like Barbie's clutch. This is yeah. where she comes in clutch. And a little kinky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So so when they find out that the caterpillar room is just kind of made to like kill the toys, mm -hmm. essentially, Barbie finds out. And Ken's like, no, 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 Barbie, don't look. And she goes, what are you doing to my friends? So yeah. she stays in the caterpillar room, breaks up with Ken. So part of that, when they're like tucking them in their cells at night, mm -hmm. Barbie like pre like pretends, but Ken, I can't take it anymore. Yeah. You have to get me out of here. And he's like, all right. But it, you know, like the rules are strict around here. You got to follow my lead, Barbie. Yeah. Like, Anything, Ken. And they're in the dream house together. And like Ken's kind of like, Kind of like a little breaking point. He's like, no one appreciates clothes around here, Barbie. <laughs> Everyone calls me a girl's toy. I like how Barbie is like, I feel like in other movies, Barbie would have been like a ditz. Or like she would have been like, yeah, fuck that. I'm going to go to like the really good parts. But like Barbie stays true to her friends. She's ride or die. Yeah. She is. They're her family. She's a smart bitch too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like how Barbie is like, she points out that famous quote where she's like authority should derive from the consent of the governed not from the threat of force yeah, <laughs> yeah. and meanwhile you have like mr and mrs potato head or play school yeah kid, like a toys and they're like what the fuck oh yeah no, i think it was like um the piggy bank and ham. yeah yeah ham and like, who else what? mr potato head yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, do, I do like how barbie stays strong and she's like one of like the most pivotal parts of the heist like, yeah yeah because uh, that's how they get the manual to reset yeah. Buzz, which is another great scene where they just kind of rip on Ken. How they're just like they just accept that he's like weird and yeah. kind of like oh, yeah, very flamboyant. She wore the astronaut. Too. Yeah, so she pretends to be yeah. Ken, and when she's walking away, her heels are still on, yeah. and the and the guy looks over and goes, "Whatever." Like, yeah. <laughs> that's Ken's Ken. Yeah, yeah. Ken. Ken's a girl toy. Literally. <laughs> I'm, I'm not a doll. I'm an action figure. I pose. <laughs> he like, so they end up escaping, but Lotso and the gang confront them, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is also a point where Woody also confronts Lotso. So it's like a standoff almost. Oh, are we Ooh. at the trash shoot right yeah. now? Yep. In the and dumpster. Then, yeah. And Woody brings up uh, Daisy. Yeah. yeah. And he throws the pendant over. Yes, the proof. Over the big baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mama. Yeah, that was sad actually. <laughs> Dude, that's big baby's like only word. In the yeah, literally. Movie. Besides, yep. ah. yeah. <laughs> you count that. Which is weird. So it's like all the other toys, even for how young they have to like mm -hmm. that their like audience is made for and stuff, they all kind of have like adult or like young adult minds and stuff like that. But Big Baby's the only one I'm, that we Big that Baby I know is. of. I'm gonna Stop put it me. off to trauma. I was gonna say, do you think <laughs> it's trauma? Because she was play they were played with as like as a baby. Yeah. So like maybe like they're stuck as Yeah, I think she'll so she's maybe, stunted. Yeah. So then maybe like if they actually got like kind of like 
I don't know, like appropriately mm-hmm. like grown out of? Do you think Big Baby would have grown up? I don't know. <laughs> oh, My man. logic was just like Big Baby's the brawn. Big Big Baby's not that smart. Yeah. Big Baby doesn't say much words. Yeah. <laughs> Big baby talk with fist. Who <laughs> knew <laughs> Big Baby would have such existential? I always saw Big Baby. Vibe. I saw him as like sloth, right? Yeah. For like most of the movie, but at that point, and you're probably not gonna get this reference, Nick. But Big Baby does a Darth Vader move, where they pick up Lotso Bear and like end up throwing him in the trash, because that's what Darth Vader does to the Emperor. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cool. And it's almost like shot by shot, exactly that. So it like, is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I was, I was actually, I totally forgot about that, but that was super jarring when like Woody's like telling all the toys like, Watso's just manipulating you, and then Big Baby just picks up Watso and yeets him in the trash. I'm like, oh my god! Because and then La- the lid just slams shut. I'm like, La- okay. Breaks Big Baby's pendant. Yeah. yeah. He finally gets. He the breaks Daisy. Big Baby's heart. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because what did that thing say? It was like, is you always belong to Daisy or something? Yeah, yeah like you're always in my heart or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> You'll Which is like, be damn. In my <laughs> but um, we also learn Ken is a good guy in yeah. this scene. You know, he's like trying to defend them, even after being manipulated by Barbie. And wrapped up in a paddle ball in his underwear. Yeah. yeah. You know, he still meets back up with them and stuff. He's either a good guy or he's just horny. He's a big he's simp. He's so simping. He's <laughs> he simping hard. Simp. Yeah. Do anything for Barbie. They were mm-hmm. made for each other, goddammit. it. Down bad. Yeah. But when they uh, finally close a dumpster lid and they're like running, one of the aliens gets like trapped. Yeah, yeah, because they would have made it. I yeah. Think. You know, yeah, because Lazo gets thrown in the trash and then the lid closes and then they're lead, trying to leave and then they get thrown away too because they went back after them. Yeah, when Woody goes back and saves the little green man and the lid pops open and then Lazo's arm grabs Woody, I was like, that was scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wasn't expecting that. That was like a. Like end of Friday the thirteenth, mm-hmm. like Jason comes out of the lake. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of dark because like they were leaving lots of there to die anyway. Yeah, that yeah. was gonna be it, right? Yeah. So when he, they end up getting also taken by the garbage, and it's like you said, uh, Buzz is like the only one trying to save Jesse right at that moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because like the trash falls on them and they all get separated and then Buzz is glowing, which I like how they keep consistent that he starts glowing at dark mm-hmm. yeah. in every single movie. And Woody's just like everyone head to Buzz, so they're all running towards him. He ends up saving Jesse by sacrificing himself by having a huge TV crash on top of him. Yeah, it was one of those t- uh, tube top ones. Yeah. yeah, and that's how he regains who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Which is weird. I don't, I don't know how that would work, but whatever. Yeah. You know, if you hit something hard enough, it just gets fixed. You know, yeah. it's just yeah. true. Yeah, duct tape fixes most of your problems and the hammer fixes the other. Yeah. <laughs> when they get to the dump, that was one of the moments where I genuinely forgot what happens at the end of the movie because I was so invested. Mm-hmm. And when, like, the bulldozer or whatever comes and takes the aliens away, I was like, fuck, they're dead. Yeah. And like toys start getting separated, and, and like Barbie and Ken are back at the daycare, like they weren't there with them. So I was like, fuck, sh- they're all getting separated, shit's gonna go down. And they end up getting tossed in that trash chute. And like they make like the selfless action and they save Lotso by like having him go in the magnet, and then they also save him by making him go up on the ladder with the belief that he's gonna turn off the like he's gonna push the emergency stop. Yeah, so the first part when they like all the everything that's like metal gets magnetized to the top, uh-huh. so Slink goes straight up. Yeah, mm-hmm. did you notice that like everyone was able to drop down because but all their stuff that they use to like go mm-hmm. up to the top is stuck up there? So, like, yeah. how the fuck did Slink get down? I don't know. So, yes, yeah, so, sure yeah, so Slink definitely would have still been stuck Good up there question. unless yeah. they pulled him. Yeah, that'd be the only thing I can yeah. think of. They but, all like, but like, of how strong that magnet is. Uh, but I'm but kind of curious, like, why they let go of the magnet, too. But I guess either way, they were kind of screwed. I think they just didn't know what yeah. was coming up because that was when Rex points out, like, daylight, I see daylight. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he's like, 
that's not daylight and yeah. they're all going into the incinerator yeah that's yeah. when they help loss up to the button and he fucking betrays them he pieces out yeah yeah lots of betrays them and they're running for their lives and then they fall into like the incinerator room and they're all trying to move and they like can't gain any more mm-hmm. ground and they just like hold each other's hands like no words are said or anything they accept they, they do they, they started accepting that they would all go together that was the part that really fucked me up like the first time i watched it and even now remembering that because it's like it's such a deep moment and what really makes me sad is when bullseye's panicking right because mm-hmm. bullseye's like a dog he doesn't know what's going on and he's like moving his arms and like he's really struggling to like comprehend what's going on and jesse just puts her hand on his hoof Mm -hmm. and like calms him down like you would to a dog that's dying yeah it was like the fight or flight was Uh that was yeah yeah, and then it was like that's all i know i like how it was like all one by one they all started grabbing each other and then like woody is like the last one because he's still climbing up and he like sees everyone Mm-hmm. And then then he grabs Buzz and Slink's hand, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then they all just kind of face the fire, and like it kind of goes on for like a, a little while. bit longer than I thought. It makes you think it's like, are it's they over. really gonna do this? Yeah. Are, are they really so, gonna kill them off? Have you ever seen the viral video mm-hmm. of the guy who that pranked his mom with that scene? Oh yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. He showed his mom that movie, but he edited it at, so that it ends there. Right when they're all holding hands and it gets close to the fire, mm-hmm. he like and he like does like a like a fade cut, and it's like and then credits start playing, and he doesn't tell her for like a week or something. Yeah, that there's more to the movie and stuff like that. So she is fucking hysterical mm-hmm. and everything like that. And I was like, I wish I did that to my mom. Yeah, <laughs> that's messed up. So what? Right. So all the toy stories. So like we've talked about so far is like they all like try to deal with the fact of like the fear of change and the fear of the unknown and i think this movie finally it's like it gets there right like toy story one it's like it it's accepted that they're still going to be there and it's like they're going to be annie's toys forever toy story two they're like let's just enjoy this for like what it is and let's enjoy it for the moment but like toy story three it's like the time has come yeah the moment's it's, over it's your time now and I think there's still like a fight in them the whole movie, but at that point it's like the acceptance finally chimes in where it's like nothing is gonna last forever. Stinky Pete was right. You're gonna end up in a dump, and you're gonna like die. Yeah. So it's like at that moment, that's what I was thinking about. I was like, Stinky Pete was right. Like everything he foreshadowed happened to them. Yeah, totally. And then, like, the whole time we're watching it, we're like, what happened to the little alien dudes? Yeah. I yeah. thought they, like, just left and, them behind. And then, like, they they used the claw they to save them. They became their own god. Like, that was literally it. <laughs> the claw. Which is crazy to think about. Because it's like, they're accepting death, and then the aliens become god. Like, literally. their own god. So Yeah, like, they intervene. Yeah. yeah. Divine because intervention. Was, that's exactly what it was. Because when they arrive at the dump, the aliens notice the claw, right? Because they're like, claw. And that's what distracts <laughs> like, them, and that's how they get, like, bulldozed over. So when they do save them, I was like, fuck, that was, that was rough. That like, was they rough. lingered on that a little bit. And I like how they're like, let's go after a lot, so. And he, Woody's like, it's okay. Not really worth it. I like how they just kind of, like, accept it, and they just mm-hmm. move on and shit. But I, I do like how Sid finds them. Yeah. And puts them in like the Sid, truck. Sid the garbage man. That's yeah. right. Which is like. No, no, no. I don't think Sid does it. It is Sid. No, no, no. Oh, oh, oh. For the or rest of the toys. They find oh. Sid. Yeah. Woody they find Sid. Sid. I thought you talked about who finds Lotso. Yeah, it was Sid. Oh, I thought it was that guy that picks him and goes, mm, smells Ooh, like strawberries. <laughs> and then he puts him on so, the front of the car. I and was then reading. they find Sid. I was I thought reading, it was two different people. I was reading I something so. where. Apparently, it's supposed to be Sid, but it didn't look like Sid. Well, the t-shirt. That's no, something that I thought The guy about. who picks him, because I know that guy yeah. takes him back. But the guy who picks up Watso. I think it's a different guy. Yeah, it's it a is different a different guy. guy, but for some reason, everywhere says that that's also Sid. Um, I refuse to believe that. I, I, yeah. I, I think that is not wrong. Sid behavior. He doesn't no. care about strawberry-scented things. No. Because no. um, I know 
um, it is supposed to be Sid because of like the shirt, or whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's also the same voice actor who played Sid. Oh, oh that's okay. cool. He returns, so it's like confirm. But I, I don't like how this movie is. It's like, you know, Sid, that really assholey kid. Well, now he's a garbage guy. Because, <laughs> like, I feel like he he wasn't that bad of a kid in Toy Story 1. It's like he could have been, like, an engineer or something. He wasn't that bad of a kid. He was getting bombs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he was just like, <laughs> Nadia, you weren't here for the recording of the episode. We've discussed that he is a kid that was left to his own devices. And he was a very, like... Misunderstood. Misunderstood kid. And he was a very creative but kid. He had an absentee father. But if that moment never happened where they traumatized Sid, he would have been like, I don't know, like an imagineer or something. But an imagineer. Hey, garbage men make a fuck ton of money, dude. Yeah, man. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with being no, like a sanitary nothing, engineer. I know there's nothing mm, wrong with it that. It sounds like you're saying No, it sounds like the the movie is trying to show that's like, yeah, you're an asshole as a kid. This is where you're gonna end up. Well, yeah, it's a bunch of animators that like work at Disney and Pixar. Of course, they they have better than bachelor's degrees. So animators are the bad guys. Oh yeah, totally. But the one thing they did do that I think was kind of neat. They didn't make it like so. He like hated his job. Like he was over there jamming. You know what I mean. Like, they gave him, like, I don't know. I feel like that was pretty satisfactory to mm-hmm. kind of come full circle with that. Yeah, and that, um, so, like, they end up getting a ride back with Sid. Mm-hmm. Like, hose themselves off. And I like how when they finally make it back to Andy's room, and they're like, okay, we'll see you later. We're going to go to the attic. And Woody sees what's happening, takes a sticky note, and, like, frantically starts writing something down. And we're like, what the fuck's happening? And then he ends up trapping himself also in the box but we don't see that because the movie makes it seem like like Woody's in the college box he's in the college because even when Andy's walking away we have that shot from inside the box so when like Woody ends up saying hey donate us to this kid or he just writes an address because he remembers the address I think he said like donate to this address which was Bonnie's house Mm -hmm. yeah and then we see that's like Bonnie's playing outside and Andy's really creepy about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Bonnie has the appropriate reaction of just like cringing a little bit until like, her mom, mom comes mom. over. Yeah. And he ends up donating all his toys, which is like, I like that moment where he's going one he's by a, one. He's introducing yeah. them all. Yeah. And he's just like, this is Dr. Porkchop. And he's like going through all of them. And then he gets to um, Woody. And well, well, Bonnie looks inside the box and goes, my cowboy. Yeah. And he goes like, oh, like, what are you doing in there? Mm-hmm. And he almost didn't give him up. Yeah. No. Until Bonnie was like, there's a snake in my boot. Yeah. Yeah. And so he pulls it away from her. Which yeah. It's like, that's hard. Because that's another part where I also like teared up a lot mm-hmm. was with Andy. Like, like you, he doesn't say anything, but you could see it through like how he's animating and stuff like all the thoughts going through his head of like do i preserve this thing that meant so much to me as a kid or do i do the right thing yeah. and like let these toys live a new life with this child which is i don't know it's a very like hard thing to do it is it's almost like the if you love something let, let it go, go. Yeah. exactly and then and then he decides to let it go yeah and he has one last play time. Yeah. Which is funny, but I don't think it's that creepy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Because I have seen that so many times in my life. Yeah. Where like someone's like, oh, these are my old toys. Mm-hmm. And then like they play with the kid and then they, you know, they leave, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. Or like, so like I've seen that happen well before this movie even came out. I think it, I think it was just I, creepy because the way just, he, he, he entered. Did. Yeah. He just kind of stood there and Bonnie's like. Mom, because this made it also makes it seem like Bonnie's also creeped out by this dude. Yeah, <laughs> and like Bonnie's never met this kid. Yeah, so it's like all of a sudden, like this kid's hanging out with you for two hours in this one afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I do like how lovingly they set down all the characters though when he was introducing them. Because I don't know the way like Jesse was laid on bullseye. They grew them like, together. It was really really nice. So at that part is where I was like full on crying at the end of the movie and I was like who am I crying for am I crying for Andy or for the toys 
or your dead childhood. Oh yeah, and or I was just like, self. and I think I was like, yeah. I was like, I think I'm crying for myself. Yeah, because I'm just like crying for like the thought of like, oh my god, nothing's gonna last forever. I'm not gonna last forever, and like you also contemplating like your own existence of like what's gonna happen and like the unknown, and it's like, and like the acceptance finally. It's like what happens at the end of the movie. It's like all of this from like the other two Toy Stories and then this one, everything that happens to everyone else. It's like just like how accepting everything is and like how Andy is like, it's almost like when you lose someone and like you like remember all the fond things, but it's like it's time for you to move on. Yeah, that's it. I was like that hit like the hardest. It really did. Like, no, like this whole, like how we said it, like, it's like acceptance. It's like you mm-hmm. have to like dab to with these toys yeah. during all three movies. And it's like, that's why it's like, it, it stinks that they made a fourth one. Yeah. Because like, it was such a good ending. It was such a bittersweet double edged mm-hmm. sword ending. Cause they all got what they needed. Mm-hmm. Andy grew up like every single person mm-hmm. has to do, you know, like you can't just, be a kid forever Mm -hmm. but you can still hold on to the things that like you had as a kid and stuff and then you know you kind of let the next generation take over you know even even though you don't want to let go it's okay kind of thing it was it was like the perfect closure like that everyone needed the toys andy Mm -hmm. ourselves like it was like everything i feel like that you could have asked for especially like growing up with it and everything oh yeah i think what started the tears for me was earlier before that when andy's in his room and his mom comes in in and she's like i wish i could be there for you forever yeah and it's like he's she's saying that but like woody's also hearing this and he's like if the mom can't be there for for you forever right. how could i possibly do that exactly no it's just like no, no. <laughs> it's like the yeah. single mom that has struggled her whole life mm-hmm. i know like being you know in the midst of a incinerator is super um i don't know existential but then i guess the comforting thing is just like uh say um say uh sorry well legacy <laughs> Having a legacy is more comforting than just being like, oh, yep, disposed of, you know, gone. Nothing's left. At least you yeah. get the ending of like a legacy and like something's going on and being preserved. And I do like that, how it does kind of imply that's like, even though you will like be gone, it's like what you leave behind and how you impact others. Yeah. Yeah, because like it's just like it's like what will you leave behind? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, will you like do you ha- do you still have toys to mm-hmm. hand down to like your kids and stuff like that and yeah. all that shit? Because like when you move, like you kind of downsize a little bit. Like, what don't I need to bring? Yeah, and like you might leave stuff behind that like you could have gave to someone else, but like hopefully you did the right thing to you at least. You know, yeah, like, you did right by the things that you had. You know what was sad is like the realization that Woody has been a family toy and he's been in the family for like generations, but now he's not going to be in the family. So like also like that part of me is also like, would I want to keep Woody to give to my kids? Yeah. Andy could, if he had, if he became a father one day, he could have just given it to his future kids. But it's also different, right? Cause it's like, it's different times now Mm -hmm. for Andy. Like things are like things don't happen as fast because like probably when like andy's father had him as a baby like he still had a lot of his personal possessions because like i feel like people had kids earlier and like they got married a lot earlier but like andy is still like going through this like major points in his life so like it'd be a long time before woody made it to andy's kids yeah might be like another 10 years. And then kids yeah. all have their dang phones. And they don't care about, about toys. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. kids don't play with toys that much anymore. Like. I all they know. care about their baby shark. Do 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 That's right. It is cool because like you do see like. Cause like there's some kids like. That I see like. Like Nadia's cousin still plays with toys. Mm-hmm. You know. Has like a pretty strong imagination and stuff. And then like. It's cool because I was like, oh, man, like I remember being that age and stuff like that. But like I, I always hear about like kids not having that nowadays, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. where it's just playing 
video games being an ipad kid and being stuck on an ipad i couldn't imagine that like i i feel like i had a nice amount of toys and i had like a lot of imaginary stories that make my barbies like the totally spies that's right (laughs) exactly it was fun yeah yeah and i do like how at the end of the movie instead of just going for like the gag reel like toy story 2 Instead, it progresses the story. Yeah. And it shows you, like, everything wrapping up at the end. With uh, Randy Newman's song, right? Yeah. What's the... Oh, uh, the one at the end? It's um, We Belong Together. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and I like how it shows how, like, Barbie and Ken kind of, like, took over Sunnyside and, like... They reformed it. Yeah, yeah. they reformed it into, like, this ideal place and that everyone's taking turns in the Caterpillar room. And the army men eventually join them. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, it is like a really nice way to wrap up the entire story. Like they, I feel like they know it's like, fuck, all these adults are probably like ugly crying in the theater. Mm-hmm. Let's have some like, <laughs> like some funny things going on to like make them stop crying. <laughs> yeah. Um, right before the ending, we, mm-hmm. we find out what happens a lot. So, yeah. Because he gets picked up by that garbage man and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And he gets tied to the front of the truck. Mm-hmm. Do you think that was a fitting end for him? Like, there's probably... He's probably stuck there forever. Yeah. Or at least a long time. It's hard. Because, like, Watso, even though I do think he's, like, the like the most bad villain in all the Toy Stories so far, I also feel bad for him. And I, I feel like... I would have liked it better if he was reformed. Yeah. Versus just punished. Be- because the thing that they did to Stinky Pete is they forced him out of the box forever. Yeah. And he, now he's going to go be a child's plaything. The thing yeah. that he didn't want to be. So and he he's bas- going to be like defiled. He's going to yeah. have tattoos That's on right. him. It's like the opposite of his like end goal. And yeah. so Lasso is now just kind of stuck on the front of this truck mm-hmm. with all these other toys. They're like, hey, buddy, I recommend closing your mouth. <laughs> you know what Lasso needed? Lasso needed a goodwill hunting moment where someone goes up to him and he's like, Lasso, it's not your fault. And it just keeps saying that over and over again until lots of bursts into tears. Lasso needed a hug. Yeah, he did. He, I know he really did. I think he, I think Lotso, if they did something like that, where they like show him, like the error of his ways, or like somehow convert Lotso back into like who he actually is inside, I feel like that would have been like a more precious ending. But. It's a kids movie, and it's like kids want to see the bad guys get what they deserve. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I didn't feel like I didn't feel that bad for him though. Yeah, I didn't feel that bad for him, but I also didn't feel good about it. And yeah. well, like all he had to do to save Woody and the gang was just press the button, and he couldn't even do that. And he could have just right, but he wanted it all for himself. I That's know like he like the ran end. the risk of them maybe going back to the daycare mm-hmm. and like. Telling them the air of their ways. Well, like the but... thing is though, like they expose Lotso in front of his crew. Yeah, so yeah. his crew already because like the moment Big Baby threw him in the dumpster, the rest of them didn't do anything. No. So like he knew there was no going back. So he was like, yeah. "Fuck these toys! You ruined my good thing. I'm gonna ruin your life." Yeah. Lotso also didn't get a moment like Stinky Pete, where Woody offered Stinky Pete a home. He's like, "Come with us." Lotso didn't get anything. Mm-hmm. Like, up until the very end, he was still, like, the bad guy. And, like, no one was really on his side. Yeah. The only reason he had friends was a fear. Yeah. And then, like, the only thing that Woody offered him was basically at the end, like, like not even near Lotso. He was mm-hmm. like, all right, don't bother with him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, leave him alone. Let him do his own devices. Yeah. Are there any other uh, points you guys wanted to hit on this movie? I think, we, think that's everything I want to talk about. Yeah, me too. I actually had one question for you guys because we kind of like mentioned it in uh, the previous podcast about Toy Story 2. But do you guys think you could see Toy Story 3 without seeing Toy Story 2? Yeah. I Because of that montage in the beginning. You know, yeah, I guess you're right because you kind of got the background of mm. these guys anyway. So like, yeah, you didn't necessarily need like Jesse and yeah. 
Bullseye's like backstory to kind of continue forward with this one because it was more like, about like the overall whole of like everybody. It wasn't just about certain like specific toys. No, I was thinking about it when I was watching like almost the whole movie, mostly in the beginning. I'm like, would it make sense the transition? I'm like, well, yeah, they're in the playtime, mm-hmm. so it kind of just like organically gets brought up there. You know, kids get new toys, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't be like that weird. Yeah, I think it's just like if you went from one to three. The only thing you'd be like is just missing like the context of where the hell did like Jesse and Jesse Bullseye. and Bull, Bullseye like come into play. So yeah. like so like not saying two is needed, just that's the only thing you kind of miss is just like yeah. how they got introduced, really. Yeah. Besides that, that I guess like you miss kind of like the idea of like what Stinky Pete wanted. And that's yeah. basically it. So yeah, I don't think you needed to watch two. Mm-hmm. No. But yeah, if you went from one to three, that's the only thing you're missing. Which really is not like much. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess it could even be like a standalone movie. Like I'm not saying you should do this, but I'm like, I guess you could watch three by itself. It might not have as much like weight in your heart. Yeah, I'd say but... it, it it hits hard because of what you grew up with. If you grew up yeah. with one and yeah. two or just one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I am curious if you show this to someone very young. And them not having grown up with them, and you just show them the movies, if it would be that impactful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or if you show a kid the Toy Story series who doesn't play with toys. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know, though. Sometimes I get nostalgia for stuff I've never experienced. Yeah, I okay. agree with that. Yeah, I guess as long as it has, like, that impact. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was basically Toy Story 3. Let's take a break, and then we'll get back to our final thoughts of the trip here. All right, and welcome back to some trivia. All right, so I got I got a couple of trivia for you guys. So, a stuffed bear resembling Lotso can be seen in Toy Story 1. During the staff meeting, Woody asks if the toys up on the shelf can hear him, and we see a shot of a big pinkish bear. John Lasseter wants to use Lotso in the original Toy Story, but Pixar had trouble getting the fur right. Interesting. Lotso is also in Up. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's an Easter egg and up. Mm-hmm. When like the he's in, like the room when the, when the balloons mm-hmm. going up into yeah. that girl's room. Yeah. Um. When I was doing some of this research, apparently a lot of the stuff was already planned from like the first Toy Story. Like there was a they wanted to have a part in I think Toy Story one, where when they're returning back to Andy's house, they have to make a detour at daycare, and that was like they oh. held on to that idea and they used it for this movie. Hmm. Tom Hanks and Tim Allen insisted that they record their lines together, which they had previously done for one day during the making of the original Toy Story, but which is rarely done with animated films. They love their chemistry, their characters shared on screen. They did have good chemistry. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm glad they insisted on, like, let's record our lines together. Yeah. So, like I said earlier, for inspiration for the sunny side Escape, the Pixar staff watched numerous prison movies directed director Lee... Uncrick said there are a lot of prison movies out there and I think we watched every single one of them. <laughs> Chuckles the Clown appeared in Toy Story 1 on the last present as wrapping paper, except he's smiling. Oh, that's kind of neat. <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the time Toy Story 3 was made, Pixar animators have figured out how to animate things like water and fur, although being able to realistically animate fur was originally a concern for Toy Story 3 animators the real animation challenge was trying to animate the trash bags in the movie since trash bags have special properties such as how it reflects light animators sp- spent weeks trying to get the trash bags correct huh. wow. kind of crazy that that's like the hardest what? thing to animate yeah what an oh. object yeah. yeah i didn't think about that oh, yeah and like the way it stretches when they poked it with like with the tail, tail. Yeah. right for big baby's one line for the entire movie which is mama <laughs> The crew had a lot of babies audition by recording them saying the line. The baby that was chosen was named Woody. In fact, director Lee Uncrick joked that that was the reason why they chose that baby. That's kind of awesome, actually. Yeah. Could you imagine, like, the mom's like, please, uh, please take my baby. I'll name it Woody. <laughs> she I'll name it Woody for this role. Uh, Andy's surname is Davis. Near the beginning of the movie... 
Woody is looking at photos in the bulletin board, and underneath one is a, is a certificate with the name Andy Davis on it. This is the first time it's been no- mentioned. Besides, if you bought an Andy toy, like we mentioned in the first yeah. podcast. <laughs> That's funny. And so he went funny. to a university called PU. PU, yeah. Pixar University. Yeah, no, but it's funnier that P-U. it's PU. The yeah. PU flag up at the top. All right. Uh, how many outfits do you think Ken wears in this movie? Oh, gosh. Let's go with you first. Um, God. Uh, I feel like I'm going to say, like, 12. Okay. I'm going with nine. I'm going to go with 17. He wears 21 different outfits. In wow. I know he had like a montage where yeah. he tried on oh, a bunch fuck. of Barbie. I excluded the montage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, like I said earlier, original, originally a sequel was planned where it seemed that Disney and Pixar would split over creative differences in 2004 to 2005. Disney started up an animation division titled Circle 7, which would have been in charge of churning out sequels of four Pixar films that would not involve the original creators at Pixar. Entertainment Weekly published an article that said that the original plot for Toy Story 3 was going to be about Buzz Lightyear having a defect. Buzz would then be shipped to Taiwan to be fixed, but the other toys find out that the toy company is just replacing the broken Buzz toys with new ones, so they ship themselves to Taiwan to rescue him. The strip had to be canned when Pixar and Disney made amends Part of the agreement was not to further develop projects that have been planned during their fallout. I think also during that time, they were also planning a Monsters, Inc. Monsters Inc. 2 sequel and and another and, and uh, Fighting Nemo 2. Mm-hmm. Like Disney was going to do all of those. I wish th- I still want a Monsters Inc. 2. Yeah, I know we yeah. got the prequel, but yeah. I want the I, I want a sequel so bad. I feel like it's it's coming up to be too late though, mm-hmm. and they should just leave it. Yeah. So John Morris, who had voiced young Andy in Toy Story and Toy Story 2, voices the now older Andy in Toy Story 3. Since nobody at Pixar had spoken to him since he was a child, they weren't sure if his voice would still be suitable for voice acting. They called him up and got his answering machine the first time. Just from hearing his voice on the machine, they knew that they had to have him play Andy again. On the other hand, Charlie Bright provides the voice of the younger Andy in the film's opening sequence and also voiced Petey, one of the toys pee in the pod at Bonnie's house. Aww. Got a couple more trivia for you guys. The final shot in the film before the end credits is that of the white clouds against the blue sky. This is a reference to the very first frame of the movie, which is also the same as the first frame of Toy Story Trilogy, Mm -hmm. that of the white clouds against the blue sky in the wallpaper of Andy's room. Yeah. Also with um, Woody going like, so long, partner. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The director said that Rax and Trixie come from the same toy line of dinosaurs. They Aww. look alike. Yeah. That's cool. I like when Rex makes it to the daycare and he's mm-hmm. with all the other little dinosaur toys. Yeah. He goes, he's like freaking out. Yeah. And the last one is the garbage truck driver seen at the beginning and at the end of the movie is Sid Phillips from the first Toy Story movie. You can tell because he's wearing the same school t-shirt. Sid act, Sid's actor, Eric Von Deaton, even reprised a role for this movie. That's cool. So, let's go into our final thoughts. I went first last time. So, Nick, you go first, this time. So, I think, I think it's probably one of the better movies Pixar has ever made. Mm-hmm. Just because of everything that we talked about. Uh... I don't know, just everything about it. We have a prison break. It mm-hmm. makes you think a fuckload about your childhood and, like, all the changes that you made and stuff like that, mm-hmm. where your stuff is going and stuff. And I like it. I think it did a fantastic job of, like, ending the Toy Story trilogy mm-hmm. in, like, the best way they ever could. And I think after watching it this time, I think I'm going to actually say... I think I like it more than Toy Story 2 now. So, would you lower Toy Story 2's rating to make this one higher? No, I would just make this one 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I, I will still hold on to how much I love Toy Story 2. It's mm-hmm. like, the, how, like how I said, it's the child I will never mm-hmm. be able to do wrong. But 3, I know, is ultimately better. Like, I enjoyed myself way more watching it this mm-hmm. time. And I don't know. I, I think it's a just a better movie. Mm-hmm. So 11 out of 10. Cool. All right, Nadia. Yeah, so 
I have to agree. I think I ended up liking this one more than I did too. And so like with Toy Story 2, it made you like, I feel like nostalgia was what also made it like, oh, like I remember like losing like a toy and like kind of being upset over that and growing and we all grow up and everything like that. But like, this is like, this movie was made for the people that grew mm-hmm. up like with this franchise and everything and the attachment to all these toys and like the idea of like letting them go and kind of I don't know it's just it it does it traps you so deep in thought and I I just think that it's ultimately so much better Mm -hmm. than Toy Story 2 so yeah Toy Story 2 I think I rated a 9 last time this gets a 10 for me I watched it only once before but I would watch this again so many times how about you, Mia? Oh, I, I noticed with this movie, I was laughing a lot more than I did with the other Toy Story movies. But I also felt more like deeper feelings, you know, thinking about like disposability of things, mm-hmm. you know, brevity of life, all that jazz. And um, I do like it more than Toy Story 2 and Toy Story 1. Um, I think it... it takes a little too much out of me for me to watch it over and over again. I would definitely watch it again. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a 9.5 for that reason is that it's it's too much like it's too much on my heart to watch it many many times. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. Well, I will say I really like Toy Story 3. I think Toy Story 3 is my favorite Toy Story movie of all time. And rewatching it again, it definitely takes up, like, in my top five Pixar movies. Whereas, as before, I didn't have any Toy Story movie. And I'm like, I think Toy Story 3 might be, like, a solid, like, second or third place now. So, I could definitely see that. Yeah. yeah. It, it's kind of weird, because it's like, I almost think Toy Story 3 is, like, almost a perfect movie for me. Mm-hmm. I think it hits all the points. It flows so well to the point where I'm like, Oh my god, the movie is almost over. Because, like, it doesn't take much breaks at all. Like, no. the plot keeps going. Like, once it starts, it doesn't stop, really. It doesn't have a lot of, like, the lowing moments of Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2. Whereas, like, I feel like here, even when they come back at Bonnie's place, it just progresses the story. And I feel like it also benefits from not having, like, musical numbers to kind of, like, put a stop to everything. Like, everything that happens in Toy Story 3 is for a reason. Like, everything that happens at Bonnie's house is because it's, like, it's sh- telling you stuff that you need to know because Woody's heading back to the daycare. Versus, like, in Toy Story 2, it's just, like, extra backstory. Toy Story 3 doesn't give you... It gives you some backstory, but it's only backstory that you're going to use immediately right now. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Mm-hmm. I think, yeah, with, like, Toy Story 1 and Toy Story 2... I know I said, like, Toy Story 2, like, I'm, like hot take it's kind of like an adult movie mm-hmm. and it had it covers like adult themes or it covers i more or less like one or two like adult themes this one like full on like just mm-hmm. kind of it makes you really like kind of think about everything that happens in life mm-hmm. and yeah and like mia was talking about the brevity of life and like yeah. being disposed of and just it it's so much more complex than, like, a kid's movie. Like, it's so... That's exactly why we can't watch it over and over and over again. Like, a kid's movie, you know? Kids have stuff on repeat constantly. Mm -hmm. But that's one It's just... It it hits too many marks to just be able to watch it over and over again. You know, if someone was, like, feeling grief or something, and, like, I feel like a really good trilogy to show them would be Toy Story 3... Inside Out and Coco, mm-hmm. Ooh, yeah. like those three movies, I feel like would be would go really well together, because it teaches you about like acceptance. Inside Out teaches you about like how like it personifies your emotions and makes you like realize like oh this is why I feel that way this is how I feel that mm-hmm. way and then Coco is like a reassurance of like even though something has gone, it, like life continues in different ways. So I feel like that's like a really good trilogy. To show someone who is like having a hard time or like, I can see that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I was just thinking about like those three movies in a row. Like, I liked Inside Out. I guess like, 
it didn't hit me as hard mm-hmm. as I thought it was going to. But like ending on Coco in that trilogy, I think I would just like start. I'd die. I think yeah. I'd just like fall over and just weep t- way too much. Yeah, like if you start with Inside Out, Toy Story three, and then Co- and finish with Coco, it's like I feel I feel like it'll be like any person dealing with anything. I feel like it'll make them feel some like something. Agreed. So yeah. I, I would give Toy Story three. I would give it a ten out of ten. Yeah. Yeah. I really like it. Even though they got rid of Mr. Shark. Nah, I don't know, man. I gotta save my ten for the Incredibles. I'm sorry. <laughs> I like this way more than the Incredibles. No, nah, Incredibles so. is always gonna be my number one Pixar movie. I don't know. I like the Incredibles. I think it's a really fun movie, but I don't think it it hits anywhere near this. No, it's, I wouldn't say it hits emotionally as hard as this movie. This mm. movie is like pretty much a masterpiece. I would yeah, say. Yeah, Toy Story three is like in the major leagues, and like a yeah. majority of the other movies are in like Pee Wee in yeah. comparison. Yeah, which is like Toy Story three hits everything I want. Any movies you hit, it's fun. It's entertaining. It makes me feel something, mm-hmm. and it doesn't like drag on too much. Yeah. And it's. Cons- like considering that this is the longest Toy Story movie, uh, and now we're in like forty five minutes. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and it sucks because I really remember liking Toy Story four. So now that we finished the trilogy, watching Toy Story four next week, I don't know if it's gonna like make me dislike the movie because of how much I'm I like going. This one. I'm going in. With all my preconceived like feelings gone, I'm I going know. in fresh as possible. That's gonna be hard because the thing is, it's like I remember walking away from four and just kind of being eh, like it. I didn't need to see that yeah. at all. Like it was just kind of whatever. But I remember not like hating it in a way where I was bored the whole time. Mm-hmm. Like it entertained me, but I was more or less like, oh, this if, if this was like a new property, then cool. Yeah. But like it didn't. It didn't. It was just not needed. So I'm gonna try to wipe away all that, go into it as fresh as possible, try to get excited. Maybe like, all right, we're gonna end Toy Story month. You know, out on a bang. You know, hopefully I crossing I my know. fingers. I, I, you gotta yeah. stay hopeful, I'm, damn it. Okay, well here's the thing. I I think I like Toy Story four, because after Toy Story three, it was almost ten years. So it's like almost the same amount of time from Toy Story two to Toy Story three. Toy Story. Two came out nineteen ninety nine. Toy Story three two thousand ten. Toy Story four came out twenty nineteen. Yeah. So I feel like there was enough distance from me watching Toy Story three and then watching Toy Story four where I was like, okay, yeah, Toy Story three ended really well. I don't remember it that well because it's been a year since I've seen it. So Toy Story four didn't like bother me as much. I was like, oh, that was a really fun movie. But now immediately watching it after this and not having years to like forget about toy story yeah, 3 giant yeah. gap it's gonna be hard not yeah. to compare them and like well, no, almost be upset that but, they ruined but like them. that's the thing though right. like you're like we're gonna do that we're gonna be like fuck right because we got the closure we got the closure this was literally just made for a money grab yeah it was like because i know yeah. i know how you said earlier like disney was kind of looking at three mm-hmm. as gonna be the cash grab but Pixar was like, that's our child. We have to end it strong. Mm-hmm. Because um, after four, I guess it's going to be kind of one of those, like, after we watch it, did most of the crew from Toy Story 3 jump on with four? That's something I'm interested to look at after we watch it. Yeah, that's, like, definitely some research to do. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I don't, because after that one, I only watched Toy Story 4 one time. Me too. Mm-hmm. And it does not feel like it's made by the same people. Mm-mm. No, I remember what, like leaving the theater after watching Toy Story 4 and being like pleasantly surprised how much I liked it. But upon watching it, you know, this week, I, I, I'm going to go into it bitter. Yeah. <laughs> because I feel like I love the, tri- like, the way this trilogy ended so much. And the fact that I know that I like the fourth one is making me so angry. I don't, I don't remember having any, like, I guess feelings towards like four i remember it being like yeah like it was okay i guess well, like it wasn't needed to progress the story like to, to de- develop the story further because it's already yeah. like really fleshed out but i do remember liking it and that's why i feel bitter right now i know it's gonna be hard because like we already lost like slink voice yeah. actor yeah. and then don rickles also died so mm-hmm. they use a lot of like archival like audio to like fill in mr potato head 
Yeah. So it, it's just weird. It, it feels like, I don't know, even though it, I know it's a cash grab, just like, but Toy Story 2 was also a cash grab, and so was Toy Story 3. And I feel like as long as Pixar, even though they're doing this because Disney is basically doing it out of spite, and they're like, we can do whatever we want. I feel like Pixar still puts in their full effort every time yeah. they do something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess uh, after watching the movie, I'm curious to see what development was like, what your mm-hmm. fun trivia is going to be, because maybe that could help me kind of boost up how I feel about it. Digest it better. Yeah, so. I guess we'll have to see next week. Yeah, well, that was Toy Story 3. I think definitely our longest podcast we've ever done. But there's just so much to talk about in Toy Story 3. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Yeah, so uh, if you like what you heard, please rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, if you want to follow along next week, watch Toy Story 4. Let us know if you also hate it or if you also love it. <laughs> I'm very curious to like know everyone's different perspective. Because I feel like when Toy Story 4 came out, it was almost like mob mentality everyone was like pitchforks and like flames or like how dare pixar do this and, like <laughs> they how dare they tarnish something that was already great mm-hmm. but you know what i liked about um what they did was they released those shorts that we were watching and i feel like that alleviated a little bit of like the gap between toy story 3 and toy story 4 because we saw like a little bit of adventures that bonnie and her toys had mm-hmm. yeah we have like two more to watch yeah they're they're like, but they're like 20 minutes or whatever yeah but... it's like a halloween special and a christmas special yeah and uh, i wouldn't have hated it wouldn't be necessary but i wouldn't have hated a movie that was like what life was like with bonnie as their like owner mm-hmm but I, at the same time, it's not necessary. But neither was Toy Story 4, so I'm like, here ah. we are. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But thanks for listening, everyone. Um, as always, I'm your host, Ish. And I'm Nick. I'm Nadia. And I'm Mia. All right. See you guys next week. Bye. Peace out. Bye.